Good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to this very cursed experience. Welcome to Night City Tombs. This is Neo Magnetic. My name is Sven. This is Crit and Rest Role Playing Games. Thank you for joining us. We're finally here. We've had a host of problems. It has not been easy to get everyone to sit down at the same time and play some cyberpunk red, but we're nothing if not determined. How are we all, guys? Determined. We're great. Determined? Yes, Good, determined. I don't know what you're talking about. It took me six hours to get on here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Um, it is fun. Uh, uh, amongst the myriad of technical difficulties um, and just scheduling problems, and anyone who's played a virtual... Or not a virtual, sorry, a, um, a tabletop role-playing game at any point in their mm. lives will know that getting yeah. people's schedules to line up um, is virtually impossible. It's not a thing. No. Well, it, we have a schedule? Um, well, you, 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 might, you might not think so. Um, we had a last minute change out. Um, unfortunately, Ali wasn't able to join us uh, because of personal reasons and the same thing for Grace, but that's, that's okay. Everyone has their lives and um, we wish them all the best and we cannot wait to see them, uh, see them all again. And we will be, mark my words, they will be back on the channel very, very soon. So don't worry because we got some some things going on in the background um, very, very soon. that we haven't Don't been worry. able to talk and about. And in the front ground. Um, but that's not what we're here for right now. We're not here to, to, to drop spoilers for upcoming games that we can't talk about just yet. We're here to play Cyberpunk Red. Now, um, some people might be watching this and uh, not know what Cyberpunk Red is. Is that, is that Cyberpunk 2077? Um, almost. Yeah, you're pretty, you're pretty close. Um, it's Cyberpunk Red is a tabletop role-playing game. Think Dungeons & Dragons. However, this particular game is not set in a high fantasy universe with dragons and fairies and unicorns and swords. This setting is something completely unique. Um, even the word Cyberpunk itself is not owned by any one uh, IP or another, it is it is like a an idea. It is a theme, um, and that theme should invoke ideas of a dark dystopian future where corporate power has run amok and where the day-to-day -day lives of citizens are ruled not by uh, governments but by greedy, power-hungry corporations who uh, live in these uh, monolithic sky-high towers while the everyday people um, fight for whatever scraps remain. Uh, and this particular game is set in a place called Night City. Now, if you've played Cyberpunk 2077, you might be familiar with Night City. It's the same place, but a little bit earlier. The reason why this game is called Cyberpunk Red is because this game is set in what they like to call the time of the red. You see, sometime after 2020, a pocket thermonuclear blast detonated at the heart of Night City, completely annihilating Arasaka Tower. The radiation filtered into the atmosphere and now every morning and every evening, the sunrise and sunsets are tinged with a crimson red. And that... Sounds like a great place. It is. And do you know what's scary is it doesn't sound too different to this world except for the whole redness. It's, it's, it's yeah. basically cans. It's an analogy uh -huh. of capitalism. Oh, it's God, it is cans. Sorry, cans. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm not sorry, cans. Roth and, and Mod, I didn't realise um, you guys might not know what Cairns is. Um, Mod, you know where you know Cairns? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. All right. Dude, I'm super rich. I just travel to all the nice places. You do. You're going to Denmark um, in a fortnight, aren't you? Yeah, to see my uh, cousin uh, Mary. She became queen recently. And your private yacht? Oh. <laughs> I'm flying there in my plane. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Jed. Um, <laughs> Yacht would take ages. Forgive me. Um, 
So yeah, I, uh, first of all, I just want to say anyone who's watching this, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we are running a fundraiser in 2024 for the Starlight Children's uh, Foundation. So even though this game is set in a dark dystopian future where it's every man for himself, we're, we, we're not quite there yet. Person. Every person for themselves. We're not quite there yet. Come back. We are, um, we still live in a society where there's still, there's still some good left in people. At least I, li I, I like to think so. Um, so if you're feeling generous, um, please use the chat command exclamation mark donate right now to follow the link. Um, and you can uh, donate one, two dollars. Every little bit counts. Um, please help us raise some money for some amazing cause. Now, let's go across the table and introduce some or maybe even all of our players shall we <laughs> <laughs> um how's that audio coming through a little bit too loud there we go that should be better um starting uh with the person at least on my screen to our left uh one of our last minutes um uh what shall we say replacement or um Addition. Additions to the uh, to the to the stream to the game. Valiant, thanks for joining us, man. Hey, thanks for having me, Sven. Uh, Valiant here, guys. Uh, today I will be playing a lawman. A if we're doing D and D, is a human lawman, I guess you could say. Um, he was a lawman, I should say. At the moment, he is traveling around through Night City uh, with a letter in his hidden compartment on his body <laughs> yeah that says that he was terminated so he is very eager to get his job back any way that he can uh he is pretty tall he's like six foot two he's got uh ratty brown hair he wears street clothes now and he's usually followed at least 30 feet behind by uh four individual automaton robots that uh are his best friends Oh, bless. That's very uh, Varying cool. shapes and sizes, and uh, they have various different um, additions to their body, you might say. So not one of them looks exactly the same. And sometimes they come when I call them, and sometimes they don't. So they're very unpredictable, and I need to get them looked at. So uh, that's Anderson Colby, uh, and in the Force, they used to call him uh, Snow, or Snow White, because he was followed by little men. Nice. Um, are you sure that's the reason why they call him Snow White? Um, we don't need to dig too, I mean, too much well, into that. He also liked to nap for a really long time. And Okay, all right. And uh, it was only the, the kiss of a man that could wake him up. Um, well, that's exactly right. So for those people who... Likes his apples. If you haven't played uh, Cyberpunk Red uh, before in the past, the Lawman, uh, it's pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It is a uh, a law, uh, an enforcer of the law, a policeman, a private detective, a detective, something like that. And they have a particular, that role, not class, it's called a role in Cyberpunk Red, has a particular skill. What's that skill called again? I can't remember. Backup? Calling backup. Calling backup. Very mm -hmm. easy. Um, so they can call in backup. Uh, and at this particular level, it means you can call in four uh, fellow law enforcers. The way that we're making that work in the uh, fiction of our universe is that those uh, that, that backup, that assistance comes in the form of four automatons um, who, you know, if we're, if we're lucky, we get to meet. Uh, and I don't have to role play. Um... Moving. One of them's definitely non-verbal. <laughs> I'd, li I'd like to think that all four of them are non-verbal. Um, mm, that one's that one's dopey. Gem. Yes. We we did it. We got the stream off the ground against all odds. How are you feeling? Yeah, good. We haven't started yet, though. So I'm still putting out the vibes that nothing crashes. Like a helicopter doesn't like hit our house or something. I'm feeling quite vulnerable. But we'll be okay. Um, so I'm playing an Australian um, rapper. So I'm playing um, Violet Taylor, um, aka Violent Thunder. And, um, oh, sorry, Violent Crumble. And I basically come from um, an offshore place in the world where Night City doesn't know much about Australia, but I got pretty popular there. I did my protest raps and things and 
They were like, do you know what? This person can come over and actually help us fight the bad people over here. So now I'm in Night City. I'm pretty new. Um, I still don't know my way around very well. Um, but I have charismatic leadership supposed to that should help us get through. So it's akin to a bard, I think. So this is going to be great. And I play the saxophone just um, not very well. So you're an Australian saxophonist uh, slash rap artist? Yes. All right. Um, so just shooting right down the barrel here. Just just a real straight shooter of a character. Nothing nothing out of the ordinary there at all. Oh, there's a fair bit. I'm very Australian. <laughs> it's going to be very bad. <laughs> oh, and I do speak French because that was the secret language that we used in our family because we were a bit underground because our cattle station was stolen by the big corporate. That's right. So this is a yes. whole new meaning to we're not playing for sheep stations. Turns no. out you were. I was. <laughs> they took it. <laughs> we spoke French. We're also from the eastern part of Australia because in WA, WA has actually left Australia. They're a republic. Um, and they have sided with Indonesia and is it Arasaka? Um, so this is like, they, like 2025, is it? Uh, 2055, isn't it? That's correct. Yeah. So yeah. The time of the red um, is 2020 yeah. something or other. Um, this particular game, yeah. I've chosen to set it a little bit later in 2055. Um, but yeah, that is. Uh, you make a good point. That's a that's a fun thing about um, cyberpunk. Is unlike many other tabletop role playing games that are set in like fictional universes. I mean, this is fictional, but it is. This is all on Cyberpunk Wiki. That's right. Like the, Australia has a story. Um, there's, you can go, I can go into it, but there's this horrible, we lost our last koala at one point. You know, it's just, it's been horrible, but the fact what that I got- What about koalas? I don't know whether they exist anymore since I left, but I haven't been here very long, but things change really quickly. What but I got an offer to come over to Night City in a blimp. And I was like, do you know what? I'm going to take it. So that's where I am. Um, yeah, I, I feel like at this point in time, Caramella Koalas might actually be offensive. They've probably redubbed it to Caramello Emus, I don't know, something like that. Um, because the last last koala died, uh, unfortunately. And that's true. Like, if you jump on the Cyberpunk wiki, yep. you can find there's a, a whole alternate timeline for the world, which runs fairly parallel to um, actual events. Uh, that's what I was saying. There's talk about uh, WA seceding. So when you said that, I was like, is it set next year? <laughs> that's what I've heard. It's not a dark dystopian <laughs> future. It's just. They tried to do that during COVID. They actually, like, they were ready to leave. <laughs> they were like, we are cut yeah. off. Yeah. Um, but it's really funny. I'll um, put the um, link in the chat, actually, for the, the history oh, of Australia. Good, yeah time it's pretty cool yeah so um yeah check that in the chat uh, people watching at home uh mm. you can uh, you can join our discord exclamation mark discord you'll be able to find all that information in our discord as well as catching up with all the uh lovely beautiful cast members that we have arrayed here in front of you on your digital screens do not adjust your radios for the next player is a uh, a familiar face on the channel and uh probably i mean i haven't seen the results of the poll just yet but might be the nicest person um, in uh, the Republic of uh, of West Australia. You're not in West Australia, are you, Mud? Oh, me? I thought you were talking about froth. Um, no, I'm definitely not the nicest person, man. I put on a brave front, but uh, no. No, it's all a facade. Um, uh, would you like me to tell you about my character? I would love you uh, to tell me about your character. Uh, you, you, you thought I was talking about you, didn't you? Didn't you, Froth? You were getting all excited. You are getting all red in the cheeks because of I all did. those compliments. I, I did for a second there, but I noticed you didn't say good looking or extremely charismatic, so I knew it wasn't me. That's what, that's what gave it away for me as well. I also realized I, nice I had your cameras in the wrong section on the overlay, so I just swapped you around. <laughs> there you go. You're in the you're in the right spot now. Anyway, um, oh, okay, that's what got me. There's never there's never a stream where everything is technically correct uh, from the start. But if I don't say so myself, this overlay is looking sharp. Pretty good. I like it. Speaking of things that are sharp, yeah, mod, tell us about your character. Yeah, uh, well, behind me, uh, mid uh foggy storms, but a cold, cold a mic death wish. Uh, basically, I'm a, uh, 
I was a reporter exposing big corporations uh, until I am now a father and I'm trying to get out of that. So I've got out of the expose business and now I'm following, I've been sent out as entertainment reporter and I, I'm working my way to become, I want to get to less dangerous. Uh, I want to lose the name Deathwish. I want people to call me Foggy Storms again. And I want to be a weatherman, but at the moment I'm an entertainment reporter. So here I am and just shake around my video camera a bit. Uh, yes, to tell you a bit about myself. Uh, yes, I have uh, a lot of valuable skills for investigation and I plan to use those to uh, hopefully disseminate the weather from a very safe office somewhere not getting shot at like and as he turns his head, you can see his hair growing back in. He's trying to regrow it because his whole youth, it's been shaved with the words death wish written across his head. And yeah, he's trying to get rid of a bad reputation and get into maybe an executive spot All right. in later life. All right. So trying to uh, trying to multi-class into that exec role. I dig it. I like yeah. I like multi-classing though. That's <laughs> Okay. Um, I don't actually think I'll have to look into it. But I don't think you can actually do that in Cyberpunk Red, but maybe it's something that we can play around with because we're um, we're uh, loose I'll cannons. I'll well, just work on motivation. Right. Yeah, I was going to be a weatherman, but I thought we got an entertainment person performing, so I thought it'd be cool if I was actually covering her rap stuff. Yeah. Well, what and fame so I'm, I'm and power. Yeah, I'm trying to work my way into the corporations slowly and hopefully I can put up with their corruption. I just I just want to be safe for my family. Nice. You keep saying that it's like it's like foreshadowing. I don't, I don't know how I feel. Yeah, I don't know how many times you try and keep you safe. How many games have you played just, on that I've DM'd? Never or GM'd rather in this instance. Never admit either that you A have an animal companion or B have a family. I have a family, I love them dearly. Um, uh, yes, uh, Liesl, little, little Liesl with her braided hair and, um, uh, Decepticon. Decepticon? Ooh. Yes, uh, he's the older sibling and I named him when I was still punk rocking. Um, correction, you did have a family. Um. No! <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's begun. It started the reign of Sven. <laughs> Don't put me in the inner seat of power. Um, I'm back, baby. Um, Frost, what's up, man? Good hey, to see you. Yeah, man. Good, bro. That's like a new record. We didn't even get to gameplay before you axed him. <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, I think the only way I can do that any quicker now is if I kill off characters uh, while we're in the starting soon scene. I say no family. <laughs> Hang on. I'm just making a few changes. Had yes. wife and two children. No, we're going to protect Decepticon and Lisa at all costs. All costs. All costs. Yes. <laughs> Hold on. Wait, wait, Froth, just one second while I write down a, a note here in my GM um, notes sure. book. I don't have any family or companions. <laughs> I'm drinking to deal with the loss of my children. I just wrote down uh, next to Mod's character, has family. Okay, moving on. <laughs> no! Frost. Oh, I don't note, know any, I've never met anybody. I grew did up you in write slums, it down next to the foggy so storms? You've already killed all my family. Yeah, I've already killed them off. Um, again. My family were all betrayed and they're, they're, they're Australia. 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 Can't get to them, can oh. you? <laughs> that zoomed in at the exact right time. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to manipulate my camera. <laughs> Um, I can't be the only person here who's excited to see the return of Redline. Definitely. I am. I'm excited. Um, do we need to do a little bit of a recap on him, or should we... I mean, I don't I don't really expect people would remember, but um, Redline is a, has the role of a nomad. Um, now, you may experience some really bad attempts at European accents. <laughs> that was pretty much the funniest <laughs> part about the whole time. So he's, he's from sort of mm -hmm. Eastern Europe. He was uh, raised in some of the, what do they call them? Um, skyscrapers? Is um, that the, I, uh, yeah. Those uh, mega buildings, mega blocks. Mega blocks in, in one of those big things. 
Um, there was some sweet deal going on with his family and the execs, and he was raised there. Um, but there was some kind of betrayal at the executive level. Um, no surprises there, huh? Um, yeah, and then, they're not um, good people. No, they're not. They're not. They're nasty, conniving. Um, so I'm still a part of the. Well, after that, we were a part of the nomad nomadic tribes, and then um, after the family was killed and all that, I was raised by. Uh, finished being raised by the nomads. Um, so yeah, my special ability is to call upon a motor pool vehicle, basically. And it's hey, you such need a, a ride? Good... I'm like, I'm Uber. Motor pool. I can't wait to yeah. see what we get this time. Motor pool. Does, does yeah. the car change every time you call it? I don't know. We'll have to see. This changes what it looks like every time. Yes, it depends it on what be. they feel like giving him. Depends <laughs> like, on how they have it. Sorry, it's all we had. It's a horse and chariot. <laughs> yes, oh, oh, that'd be that. great. Or you that'd could. Be like, well, it'd be like being back at home. Call yeah. the rent. It uh, yes. it depends on what Eastern European family has available at any one time. <laughs> horse and carts should be able to arrange. Yes. Um. Wouldn't they be rare in Night City? People would have eaten them by now. Yeah. What Eastern horses, Europeans yeah. or horses? Horses. <laughs> Maybe it's no, been in a shopping cart? The Eastern Europeans <laughs> have taken over the NBA on the uh, Night City, so hey, that, they're all just tall and big. That that could that could be accurate. Um check the uh check the Night City wiki. Um check the wiki. Check the wick. Um Alright. Well, I guess there's no more stalling to be done. Um before we get the game no. started tonight, uh quick dis uh, disclosure. This is my first time, or technically my second time, um playing Cyberpunk Red and I'm jumping into the GM seat, um just diving headfirst. Um and I think for most of us here it is the same experience. So we're going to be learning this game live on air. So Maybe you can learn along learn too. with us. Um, yes. It's going to be learning. tutorial slash train wreck, isn't it? Tutorial slash train wreck. That's going to be um, the name of my audio or, or, or autobiography, I think. I'm going to add that. <laughs> tutorial slash uh, train wreck. Yeah. Mine's running with scissors. The West Camp story. Um, oh my god! <laughs> uh, so yeah, we, we we might get some rules wrong. We 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 might have to uh, improvise some things. Um, my plan is to get this edited and uploaded to YouTube as well. So if you're watching this in the future, in the dystopian future, um, and you think uh, that we did something incorrectly, or um, you just want to give us a compliment, make sure you check it in the comments. Um, yeah, because. All the words in the comments help heaps, so do that. Yes, please do. Or if you just want to, you know, just just have a conversation, just talk about, you know, what's going on in your life, um, but talk ask about your Finn, kids. Ask Fen why he's so mean to us. Ask me. What does he have against families and children and living, just people living their lives? Just, just be careful. You might get rid of your family. <laughs> it's... Um, I don't have one. <laughs> I'll try and protect yours at all costs. It's just feelings of inferiority, really. I just really, um, I try and, I try and compensate uh, for my tiny appendages by just being unnecessarily mean to people. I thought your little arms, arms little, arm, <laughs> yeah. little tiny T Rex arms. Um, I've, I've never. I like how me and Froth got to the same place at the same time. Right away. <laughs> it's little arms. It's just. Uh, All right, Sven's right, like, play. Is that Come on. true? Do I have the arms? Um, he no, actually, he actually has quite nice arms. No. I feel yeah, like he needs cool. to show them. No, I want <laughs> I feel his like... arm up, yeah. No, no, the arms. no skyrocket these ratings. I'm, go. No, I'm too self conscious Those about my arms. Those arms were punching people now. earlier today. Uh, they were. He was punching. Uh, uh, they can't be that small. They're tiny. I have to get in real close. We've got big arms. Uh -huh. I disappear into the city. They do. It's Ooh, it's weird. City arms. Um. Ooh. All right. Come on. Let's, Let's do Let's this. Go. Let's stop stalling. I can sit here and talk to shit with you guys all night. I'm not stalling. Yeah, I'm talking to myself. This is a bit of self motivation here. It's, um, let's let's, uh, go. let's let's dive into let's this. Go. Um, it's time to duel in this neon lit, dark this cyber won't punk itself dystopian future of cyberpunk. I want you to I want you to picture this really. Um, Really imagine this 
in your head as if you were watching um, Blade Runner. <laughs> we the first one or the second one? Whichever Just one. Weekly. Whichever one you enjoy better. <laughs> Harrison Ford it is. He's in both, but we'll we'll keep we'll move is on. He? he is definitely is. Um, we we see Harrison Ford. No, we don't. Um, oh shit! <laughs> He's immortal. <laughs> Um, we fade in on a wide shot of the night city skyline. It's early morning, but this city never sleeps. Concrete megastructures topped with automated cranes and littered with neon lit advertisements dominate the view. The crimson sky is a reminder of the pocket nuke that detonated in the city 28 years ago, bringing an end to the fourth corporate war and ushering in the time of the red. The sounds of sirens, dogs barking, engines thrumming and the crack of distant gunfire cut through the brisk morning air. We slowly descend and we can see that we're in a small park built into the side of an overpass. Black trash bags litter the graffitied concrete confines. Both figuratively, both real trash bags and trash bags of people. And trash people. <laughs> trash bags litter the graffitied concrete confines of a single metal bench sits under a tree. Its yellow paint chipped, peeling and sporting burn marks and more than one bullet hole. As we look, we see four distinctly different individuals have gathered in this nameless park in a forgotten corner of Night City. You each have your own motivations for being here, but as for why you find yourselves in this particular place, at this particular time, well, that comes down to a message that each of you received on your personal agents. And you know what? Let's uh, let's check that message out, shall we? Um, open that. Nope, that's not the right button. That is um, like that. All right. So if you have your virtual tabletop open, you should be seeing that popping up on your screen right now. Who would like to read that message? I'll do it. All right. Um, the velvety uh, tone of Mr. Valiant, who you might uh, recognize, maybe, from the Valiant Odyssey podcast, but we'll talk more about that later. Please read on. Good shout out. Okay, I'll do it in my accent. I received your number from Mutual Contact. I've been ensured that you're capable and reliable. I'm putting together a team of souls? Solos. To do a job. Oh, solos. I, I'm, my character has trouble reading. <laughs> 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 to do a job, and I need people who know how to handle themselves. There's C O D D E Ds <laughs> to be made. Um, Is that dollars? I don't know. Good, I'm doing good this eddies. Character. Good eddies. So good eddies. in this world, good eddies, eddies uh, is short for euro dollars, which is the currency that is currently in use in the United States. Please continue. But more than that, there's the promise of more paid work. If you can prove you have earned your reputation, there is a park in Watson. I need you to wait there and meet with the rest of the team at dawn. The coordinates are... Oh, God. Times like this, I wish I wasn't dyslexic. <laughs> I will send you further instructions once you're all introduced. Stikes. And that that uh, that message is signed Sticks. off. Sticks. All right. The four of you stand in this forgotten, forlorn park in a corner of Night City. What was the purpose of this park in the first place? You're not sure. Probably some long forgotten relic of a time before the detonation of the pocket nuke in the center of Night City. You've all received this mysterious message from someone who only identified themselves as Sticks. Now, each of you are 
edge runners, sometimes known as solos. You are the kind of people that fixers call upon to get jobs done. The kind of jobs that other people can't or won't do. Sometimes the NCPD can't be trusted to enforce law. That's where people like you get called in. Sometimes gangs need extra hired muscle to pull off a job. That's where people like you come in. What kind of job you guys have done in the past is irrelevant now, but you do find yourselves here with the promise of paid work and even better, the promise of more paid work should you be able to complete a task for this person. Is there anything that your characters are doing at this point in time? Are you introducing yourselves to each other? Are you smoking a cigarette? I'll leave it up to you. And whenever you're ready, we'll move the story along. I just want to take out my uh, agent and just be like, Honey, I'll be home a little later. Got quick job to do on way home. Feed kids. And send that. And you see, you send that message. It comes up with the little uh, indication that the message has been sent. You see three little dots appear and then disappear and then appear again <laughs> and then disappear. For a moment, there's nothing. And then there's just a simple reply. Okay, stay safe. See you later. It took her four turns to be able to spell okay. I'll be behind him at that point, and I'll see the dots poking up on his phone, and I'll be like, ooh, brother, that means she's mad at you. No, uh, she, she's not good uh, with the uh, phone. It always happens whenever I'm messaging. She does, doesn't Trust quite. Me. I'll put a hand on his shoulder, and I'll say, I've messaged enough people to know. If it takes him more than once, they're angry at you. I'd I'd bring her home a present, something like that. Um, do you know where I could find these numbers here? And I'll show him up my um my agent. I'm looking for somebody called St Sty Stikes. Yes, dear. Stikes. 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 It's definitely Stikes. I I know this. I I, I think I know this guy Stikes. Oh, you're um, Stikes. Stikes. And uh, those coordinates are uh, this park just here. Uh, I'm standing over here. Uh, see the park bench over there? And I'll point over where the other two might be. Uh, that park bench, we, uh, it's actually over there. I was just waiting to see who turned up. But uh, it's oh. obviously you. And uh, I go, I, I suppose, and I put my message up. I suppose you're uh, going to be doing some running with me. So my name well, is Death. Technically speaking, uh, I, I work alone, so... If no, you uh, working with me. Just as you say that, you see that the just the top, like the forehead and like the um, the neon lights that represent eyes on like this automaton sort of poke its head around the corner, and as you say that, it sort of looks back again. Um, Valiant, you you recognize that as one of your um, automated uh, compatriots that follow you around everywhere you go. I'll talk into my thing and be like, oh, create a room. And um, if you listen closely, you can hear the sounds of metallic footfalls. And that's I the feel last. like one would like trip over obnoxiously. Can you see it in full board? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh From like behind a like m oh, yeah. <laughs> behind the, this concrete barricade that's like blocking um, like this highway from the park that you're currently in you can like hear the sound of like metallic footfalls for a brief moment and then you hear like the sound of one of those uh black trash bags and like this automaton and i imagine like it's like this very um what's the words like rusted clockwork. decrepit clockwork like something that was built before the time of the red just stumbles out from behind this barricade falls down onto its hands and knees sort of looks over to you sort of writes itself dusts itself off and turns around and goes running off again i'll give him like an encouraging like thumbs up 
and I'll look back to um, Foggy and I'll say, um, he, he's doing his best. I'm, I'm Colby, by the way, Anderson Colby. Colby, nice to meet you. I'm De- I'm Foggy Storms. Foggy. Some kind of you, you call me Foggy. Foggy Bottom, it is. You, you're a cameraman. You like to take pictures. Yeah, yeah. I'm a uh, le- le- uh, cameraman. I'm uh, very. I have a bit of an underground following. I kind of uh, work with people, but uh, yeah, uh, as you can see, I do the video and I sort of uh, upload and try and try and help society. Like I intend. I don't know what this job is, but hopefully it'll lead to something that's really important to help society like weatherman i'm i'm hoping for the same thing so if you catch anything on footage make sure you send it my way because i'm i've got some people i'm trying to impress if you catch my drift any highlights love to see them all right then these little things here do they have names are you and i'm just gonna throw a can at one of them I imagine like hits him on the head and just bounces away. You you, then... you look over, yeah. You you see one of these robots and it's like sort of hiding behind the one tree in this park, and it's quite clearly, <laughs> quite obviously, still in sight. I'll, I'll hand it over to you, Valiant. Uh, and I'd say that one of them that seems to be the most diligent of them, like turns their weapon towards it and just blasts it extremely loudly, like multiple times. And I'll just like press a button and it stops. And I'm like, yeah. Um, yeah, those guys, they're my best friends. Uh, we've got Happy, we've got Grumpy, uh, we've got Sneezy, and that one over there that's uh, chasing its own tail and digging into the trash pile. That's that's dopey. Yeah, I, I, not my best work, but, you know, they I like his hat. everywhere I go. I like his hat. Uh, thanks, I got that from a thrift store over on 14th, but, um, uh, yeah, so... They, I know, they, I know that thrift store. Us. I know that one. I got these from and I just do the sunnies. And as I lift the sunnies, you can see that one of the eyes actually rotates a little bit and it's got a little uh, lens that focuses in. Oh, God. Oh, do you have some cybernetics? Uh, I do. Oh, tell, talk to us about those cybernetics. What do you have and what does it do? Uh, this is my second camera. And this one is... Uh, it allows me to store up to uh, 12 hours of recording. Okay, so I imagine, is that recording at the moment? Is that recording as we speak? Uh, no, I have to start the recording. i got a memory chip that it stores on. Okay. Um, let me know when that starts recording, and maybe we can sort of factor that into the story as we progress. Who knows? Um I like it. All right. And um, as we see that um, cybernetic implant, that uh, that cybernetic eye that you have embedded in your eye socket, is that right? Uh, yes. As we see it turn and focus in, we follow that. We, we, we sort of see it from a first-person perspective. We see the image that you're looking at sort of um, become blurry as the focus changes, and then it turns back again and becomes like pristine clear again. And we see this, uh, this scene from your perspective, and we see two other people somewhere else in the park, very close by, um, and we're going to cut to that scene um, over to Jem uh, and Froth. What are your characters up to, if anything, at this point? Well, I'm just standing against the wall, smoking, holding my saxophone, looking around, because I'm think, still well, very fascinated by Night City. Yeah, I, th- I think while you're doing that, um, you'd all hear a car in the background that sounds like super sweet, like, and then, um, if you knew anything about cars, you'd be like, yeah, yeah, that's a sick sounding car. And then you see it sort of come sideways around the corner, like, and you realize it's not a nice car at all. It's just like, <laughs> like total bomb. Is there a boom box on the top? Everywhere. Yeah, like, like, like playing the music. with duct tape with yeah. like fluoro yellow spray paint on it and stuff like that. Um, and uh, it, as it comes closer, it, you can see all the smoke billowing out of the back of it and it pulls up and stops and it does like a big backfire 
and then um, you see a guy in a in a sort of black uh, trench coat with red trims come out, uh, looking around, looking at his phone or his what do we call them in cyberpunk the the agents um, uh, the agents that's it looking at his agent the phone and um, looking around the park and he looks at you um, violent crumble and looks at these other two dudes great more people yes go now go i don't need you anymore and the car would it would close and it would take off and it would go Ooh, ah that's that a great rough. picture yeah i'll take that um yep hi g'day i'm violet how are you going good good day good day what's that pardon good day oh you wouldn't know it's uh, it's australian i'm from an um a drift nation called australia just off the coast about twenty thousand kilometers or something i'm new i like your car i haven't seen many before i like the sounds too do they come from the car yes you know, yeah? know much about the car oh yeah. wow yeah no that's great that's great cool i'm glad that someone brought a really good vehicle to this Please we are ready to go you then not also get a message on your agent I did, I did actually, yeah. I oh. thought I was just probably going to be working on my own or right. meet some weird guy called Sticks. Oh, no. You're not Sticks, are you? I'm not Sticks, no, but this is not a good start. Do you reckon they're where, Sticks, those people over there with the weird robots? Oh, where are they? Hey, you. Hey, you. Come over here. So anyway, as I was saying, the... Uh, oh, <laughs> is, that, is that lady calling? What? Yes. Do uh, you know her? No, but uh, my audio suite, I've been listening to them the whole time. Apparently, That's kind of uh, rude, man. That's kind of rude. I can't switch it off. It's just uh, multiple tracks ah. at the same time. So You're just um... uh, it, it appears they also are looking for Stikes, but they, they're pronouncing his name weird. They're saying are you uh, Sticks. Sticks. Are you Sticks? No, I'm, I'm Colby. Oh, I'm looking oh, for hi. Stikes. I'm I'm, I'm foggy. Even... Yes, uh, Stikes. We look for Stikes. Wait so a minute. We are. We. This is. We are meant to meet each other. We are the. Crew. I think so. I've got, I've got. I've got the message. Did we all get this message? Oh, yes, beep, Stikes. Beep. Uh, it's Stikes. Yes, yeah, Stikes. Oh, definitely I beg Stikes. You I'm pretty sure. Right. I'm pretty sure I know Stikes. He says, okay. "I need you to wait there and meet with the rest of the team." Oh, I didn't read that bit. I just read the coordinates and I was too busy trying to find my way. Now we are here. You should be sending further instructions. Oh, good. And so, uh, please don't allow me to interrupt. I was just going to quickly turn to Colby and say, uh, let me, um, I will do formal introduction for us. Um, uh, G'day, mate. G'day. How are you going? G'day. G'day, mate. It means hello. What is this? Oh. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's, that's Australian. Uh, I wasn't oh, born yeah. yesterday. Uh, <laughs> welcome to our beautiful city here in the night. Um, actually, you look really there, familiar. Can... Yeah, you might know me. I'm, I'm sort of sort of famous, but underground. But is there, are there, is this place beautiful? Because I haven't seen anything nice so far. I've been here oh, for was, like three months. That was months. sarcasm. It's bleak. Here. Oh, okay. I don't here, understand here sarcasm. I'm like from Australia. Second. Okay, well we, we we tell it like it is, but yeah, no, um, no, it's um it's a weird place, but yeah, no, you might have seen like I've I'm like a protest rapper, um, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I'm yeah, scanning yeah. my agent in the moment, and I've already brought up her whole background and bio, and I'm gonna step backwards and uh, just uh, nonchalantly, my handheld camera, not my eye one, I'm just gonna like lift it up because I'm super stealthy. I'm just gonna go start recording and just like. And I'm like, hi. hi. <laughs> um, oh, no, I'm just. What I'll get you to do, um, Mod, is roll the, Let's roll the night. very first roll for Neo Magnetic and the first roll Ooh. for the night. Um, I am going to have a quick look at the skills list that I have here, but I'm pretty sure um, stealth uh, is one of them. Or. Acting? Does acting work here? Because you, you're trying to act like you're you're not doing anything. Um, so I feel like that might apply. Um, He's trying to act cool. I reckon that one. Yeah. All right. I'll I have dig it. stealth. I have photography. 
Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with acting because you are clearly in view. You're not trying to stay out of sight here. You're not trying to stay uh, unheard. You are trying to act as though you are doing something uh, which you are actually not doing. You're trying to act as though you're not doing anything, but you are actually uh, activating a camera um, or. Am I reading this wrong? Does your cybernetics require any act, any kind of activation? I'm turning. Yeah, uh, I'm doing the handheld one. Okay, it's all right. It's just a video camera. I'm gonna. So it's quite large. I'm gonna go ahead. Do I'm I need gonna... to roll with disadvantage or anything? No. What I'll do is, um, I'll get you to, um, I'll get you to roll that, um, that acting. If you're trying to activate that without anyone noticing, um, and we'll set the uh, DV, um. Probably at uh, the average uh, perception for each of the players. So that's going to be five um, plus your perception skill um, and whatever relevant stats uh, that is. Uh, so, I'm not entirely sure what that is. Let me have a quick I, I'll, I'll roll it, but just to be clear, this isn't like I'm doing it stealthy more to be polite than actually. So it's more like stepping back and just rather than putting it right in the face and putting it on camera. So I'm trying to get natural shots. Ah, okay. Ah, so that's that's cameraman. That's so I got a 14. A 14. Um, is that going to be higher? So I need you all to have a quick look here um, to have a look I'll, at I'll look the awareness perception. So um, your perception uh, plus your intelligence and then add five and tell me if that is higher than 14. Uh, oh, mine's way higher. Perception plus what? My intelligence. Yeah, I'm higher than that. Okay, so uh, Gem. I'm way higher than that. Um, <laughs> Colby. I was going to say, I think everyone's way higher than that, yeah. You you probably noticed that happening. We're just going to go ahead. We're not going to call that a roll. I'm just going to I'm just gonna take the average here and find out who does and who doesn't notice. Red line, is it above 14? You're on mute, my friend. I rolled a 16. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, so he tries to do it in the most nonchalantly uh, way possible, uh, but I imagine maybe you forgot to change the settings on your camera this morning, and as soon as you hit I the uh, go I, live I, button, there's like an audible sound. It actually, it acts uh, for the visually impaired. I actually turned that setting on, and when I pressed it, it's like recording now. <laughs> and I'm like, oh great, hi, are you a camera person? Uh, uh, yes, I. Uh, uh, could you say something to the people of Australia, maybe? Hi, hi. Um, coming here was a bit of a mistake, but I'll do you proud. He doesn't mean it. I do. <laughs> I think right. while that's happening, I've got my favorite screwdriver tool and I'm sort of tapping on the side of the case of the camera to figure oh, out sir. how it's made. I'm and Colby. I'll hold out a hand to him. Hello. Shake your hand. Okay. And you see me I'll go leave. really quiet because I'm going to try to rap. Oh, no, I, I stay recording. Yeah. Yeah. Where's the performance? This is it. Go, go on then, Jim. Rap for us. I'm trying to. Try. I'm trying to while well, rolling. I may rap at one point. Where is it? Technique? Um, it should be under... Um, let's have a look here. Social, maybe. Social. Um, and we're looking for performance. No, it's not there. No, there's actually performance, I thought. Play instrument. Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, performance. Um, let's go ahead. Let's say that rapping is your instrument. Okay, yeah, cool. All right, so I'm going to play my instrument. Let's see if I do any good. 17. 17. Um, a 17 is is pretty good. It's not like world-shatteringly <laughs> good rhymes. Uh, maybe you have to twist the English language a little bit in order to get some of the uh, some of the lines to work. But it's pretty oh, good. It's not very good. It's got a pretty good beat to it. And uh, maybe a couple of you right. find yourself sort of... You know, you can't help it. You sort of find yourself tapping along a little bit. I'm not going to get you to rap, but what I would like to know like is what is the subject of the lyrics? What are you rapping oh. about? It's, it's it's a love letter to Australia and how much I miss koalas. 
because they went extinct not long before I, I left. I, I dig this song, Koala Bear, on the veranda, sitting in a rocking chair. <laughs> Drinking its tea. <laughs> Look at its hair. Going to the beach, eating a shrimp. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. And we hear these sick lyrics being spat <laughs> by our local rap artist in uh in a park in a in a back street of night city nothing could be more appropriate for the current situation <laughs> but we see this scene again through the lens of the camera we see violet taylor as she is performing this i want to say freestyle rap there live in front of you and we can hear the sounds of huge lorry trucks passing by on the overpass just behind you as that happens the backdrop for this music video is these graffiti concrete walls and these black trash bags which are piled up against the wall this is night city this is the essence of the street I'm going to give each yeah. and every one of you one luck point because that was some amazing role play and I appreciate it. Well, way, the way a luck point works is a little bit... It wasn't bit, luck though. We're just fucking good. You're just good. No, yeah. I, I'm going to say you got lucky with having me as your uh, as your edge lord. Nice. Well played. Well played. <laughs> I've already got six luck, so now do I have seven? Um, no, so yeah. what this is, this is not, this is not like the the skill or the stat luck. This is a luck point. Now the way that works is oh. a lot like inspiration. Yeah, no, he's got. So if you go to combat, um, you should start with six. Yeah, you just add one to that. And how do we use it, Ben? I'm going to try and sound less Australian when I'm, I'm usually not that Australian. Um, how do we use it? <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked. Um, no. Um, Mate. The way that luck points work in this is very similar to inspiration if, you, if you've played Dungeons & Dragons before, but you don't get advantage on your roll. What it basically does, it's just going to give you a plus one to a roll. Now, here's okay. the caveat. This must be announced before you make the roll. I'm not going to allow you to Ooh. make a roll and then be like, I'm going to use a luck point and add a plus one to that. It's not how this is going to work. If there is a roll that you think is important, and you desperately need to succeed on this role, then you need to announce that you're going to add your luck point to that role ahead of time. If we do cool things like rapping in a park, uh, if you do amazing role play like you guys have all done already, I might decide to be lenient and add, you know, give you give you a little gift, give you a little bit of luck. Um, don't Thank say you. I never give you anything because I, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. I'm going to kill you anyway. So have no. I'll build you up, then knock up. you down. But anyway, we see this whole scene as if from the 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 camera lens of Foggy's um, camera. So I imagine um, in this sort of setting in this universe, it's it's not quite like VHS sci-fi, but it is. It's kind of like a, like a mishmash of this futuristic cybernetic technology crossed with like 90s tech. So we do see a little bit of that um, film grain as we watch this scene unfold in front of us. And as this is happening, at the very end, just as you're about to stop recording, we hear simultaneously a beeping sound from each one of your agents. You pull out your agent. Mike, can I tell you what my agent's um, ringtone is for messages? Please do. It's, do, 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 do. it's like the sax solo from the best saxophone song ever at Eurovision. Mm. Yeah, I so get it's like, it. do, 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 do. And everyone's like, yeah. <laughs> do, 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 do. Yeah. I I love that this is mine's, set. Mine's bad boys. Oh, bad boys, oh bad no! Boys. What you gonna, gonna do? do? And we start sorry, riffing sorry. off it. No, I, I I love that this this is set in like this like edgy oh, no. dark dystopian future, but um, Eurovision is still a thing. It's mm. still of a thing. Of course it is. It's it's what brought anywhere. the end of um, the koalas. Yeah, it's now set in Australia. 
and all the but tourists the, uh, coming from that hunted the koalas because <laughs> the, the world's yeah, so yeah. they needed some joy if we're all doing the ringtones mine is just a uh the sound of a pistol unloading and then tapping and racking and then firing again everyone dives so to every the time that happens i dive, dive to the ground <laughs> until i get used to it <laughs> because i'm like three robots uh duck from behind a corner <laughs> aiming firearms straight at you and one of them stumbles over and lands face first into a pile of trash bags uh, be, I'll go and actually like pick him up and dust off his shoulders and look him in the face. I'll be like, it's all right, buddy. It's okay. There's like a banana peel lodged into the gears yeah. of the uh, of we'll the robot pick... shoulder. Oh, what have you done to yourself? We got a mission. We got a job. And he looks like really, really happy. He's like jumping up and down. He's like, don't look too excited, okay? They got to think that we've been on more than one of these. And it I'll takes you guys. It, it takes like this pose, like it's not interested in what's going on, like quite clearly trying to trying to trying to fly, fly casual. Look at a bird. So who are they? Who are they? Oh, they're, they're my mates. They're my friends. Uh, oh, that's okay. Happy. Uh, over there kicking the trash can. That's Grumpy. He's always Grumpy. Yeah. Uh, Sneezy's the one with the happy trigger finger. And this lovely character here with a banana in his head. That's Dopey. And, Hi, Dopey. Uh, yeah, he's he's a sweetheart. But um, he was just made from everything that I had left, so... We gotta take care of him. So this one has Happy's trigger finger. How does Happy shoot his gun? Happy is just he he keeps me optimistic. Okay. Sneezy is the one with the trigger finger. You gotta watch, and he's just like. Oh, I uh, sorry. I thought you said. I thought you said he has Happy's trigger finger. That's my bad. No, no, Happy, Happy. And I say to Red Line, nice why is your know. phone on silent? Why is your phone on silent? Camera turns on. I don't know. I, I think you, as, as it said that, you would have busted me reaching out towards um, one of the automatons, and you see, like, my fingers, the tips of my fingers are, like, opened up, like like a cap, and there's these little leads coming out, and I'm sort of, like, using those little leads as, like, tentacles, tapping around the automaton, just checking it out. And whoa, whoa. As, and as you say that, I would have sort of got, oh, oh, yes, uh, very, very nice build, looks like, yes. Phone, um, silent, I don't know. Maybe I, uh, did not want to disturb your performance. Oh, thank the you. The koala bear is very good, yes. Oh, I can't see the text. It didn't come up properly. Um, does anyone else have this text that we just got? Oh, no, we look at our phone, at our agent. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah it just come up. All right, who would like to read out that yes. one? I'm going to vote for Froth in his Eastern European accent. Yes. Yes. All right. Okay. The, votes have, the votes have been cast. So, uh, again, from caller ID unknown, but he already said his name was Sticks, if it is a he. I'm not sure why. Uh, now that you've all had enough time to get to know one another, it's time to get to work. Look towards the east like eastern europe yes very nice uh you should see mega block hid h10 h10 mm. yes h10. this is a very very hard to read font it, it is, is. It's very especially blocky. for an australian it's still we, under we wrote we write in lowercase <laughs> we got rid of uppercase <laughs> it's still under construction but that hasn't stopped the corpos from dumping a bunch of displaced and desperate people there. Some gangers have been cooking a low-grade synth coke in an apartment. Not a problem in itself until they decided to toss a 14-year-old boy off the balcony. Get in there, clear them out. I don't care how, just make sure there is no collateral. I will contact you once it's done with payment. Jeez, what a first job. Are you guys up to this? Yeah, I know why I'm here. I, That's I, the think, kind of the, uh, I think he kind of left off how much the payment will be, but yes. desperate times and press a button and the camera sort of opens up and a pistol comes out, put it back in, close up the panel. I hope this is, uh, going to be worth some good eddies i might oh i can't even text back no all right uh, can i look to the east uh, for the mega block h10 
You absolutely can, but before you do that, um, Jem, you said you were trying to text back. If you try to do so, um, the message gets returned to you um, with a with a message telling you that um, that number is no longer in use, um, which is an indicator that it was probably sent from a burner phone. Yeah, I think they're using burner phones, by the way. Um, I don't think we're going to get to meet this. Is it Stikes? Stikes? Message here corrupted. Not sure what this means, but... I don't think we should waste our time trying to track down Stikes. I think... No. If these gangers are hurting children, that should be our priority. Yep. Show me which way's east and I'm in. East is that way, and I'll point to the wrong way. Okay. (laughs) I'll I'll, I'll, I'll I'll follow you then. We all look up to the minimap that's above all our heads to the right. <laughs> there you go. And the mini mat slowly turns as we turn our head and it says east at <laughs> the top now. Might be that big building with the tent on it that's under construction. Wake up and smell the roses. Oh, that's a nice thing. It, it, okay, let's go check it out. But it says to um, no collateral. Um, and how, how is everyone with no, no collateral? Should we bring Sneezy? Or should Sneezy uh, probably stay behind? No, they they just follow wherever I... Okay. I actually don't know how they get to where I am, but they always end up being there. So Maybe they, don't, like, don't worry about teleport. That. Okay. I, I feel right. like there's, like, a side mission happening about how they get to where I am. <laughs> like, that's just a whole other story. <laughs> um, while we're here, before we do continue, I just want to do a quick shout-out um, to... Um, Ali, who's in the chat but wasn't able to join us tonight, unfortunately. Um, don't worry. Um, as soon as you're feeling better, you'll be right back here in in one of the players' seats. It's just not. It's it's amazing, um, but it's just not the same without you. So get better, um, and you know, hopefully, we can see you back here uh, again very very soon. Because you know, every. Uh, every group of solos needs their net runner. Um, yep. Uh, and also check out the Townsville Tabletop Guild if you're in the Townsville area for all your tabletop role-playing game needs. You look towards the east, and the <laughs> that was smooth. Sorry. Image to make it unsmooth. That you see uh, on your um, screens at the moment is taken from Cyberpunk 2077. You can see Mega Block H10. If you've played the game, you might recognize that as the place where your character V uh, has their own apartment. But I want you to think of that and try and imagine in your head that building not quite being complete. You can see. Um, how it's divided into um, three uh, separate stacked blocks. Imagine that third block on top not quite being complete yet. You can see these massive automated cranes that are lifting large pieces of iron and concrete and lowering them into place, even from this distance, with the red crimson light of the morning sun casting its glow across Night City, you can still see in the very distance these tiny little sparks as welders weld these iron beams into place. But even so, you can see that these huge neon lit billboards are already advertising these bright, um, ultra sexualized advertisements across each facade of this building. Um, is there anyone interested in perhaps doing a role? You were talking about Stikes or Sticks. You're not quite sure how to pronounce this name, but it might be a name that some of you are familiar with. It might be not. We can do a role mm. for that if you want to know more, or if you don't think that your character would know them, we can also just role play that. Um, I, I think I want to do a role. You want to do a roll? Okay, let's have a look. Yeah, I've got a lot of like, um, what is it, local expert points? Yeah, I was about to say, we we could do a local expert roll. Anyone who wants to um, sort of um, think about, hey, have I heard this name before? Obviously, this is a fixer of some sort, but Night City is a big place, and each of its sort of boroughs and districts have their own fixes 
sometimes those sort of districts overlap sometimes they don't uh, sometimes fixes work in a very tight sphere of influence and some fixes like the very famous ones like rogue they have their sphere of influence that encompasses the entire city so you might be talking about someone who is a bit smaller or maybe one of these more legendary fixes well i i just i, I don't know who this person i just did a role and nah I not know no these idea. dicks, but no do I care. They pay um, I do more job, they don't pay, that's it. Okay. Better that's a twenty one, baby. Oh one. I um, click the die thing. So nice. yeah, uh for those people who are new, uh like I am to Cyberpunk Red, you might know that um well, I mean, if you if you play D and D, if you play Pathfinder, any of your traditional role playing games, generally speaking, you'll roll a twenty sided dice and you'll add something to that, um, whatever you roll on the dice, some kind of modifier, and that will tell you how successful you are at any particular action that you're trying to perform. It's a little bit different with Cyberpunk Red. The same thing at heart, but we get there in a different way. So what we do is we roll a ten sided dice. We take that result. We add a stat, which is like your core mechanics of your character, how intelligent you are, how strong you are, how charismatic charismatic you are, how cool you are, how agile you are. And then you add to that a skill, which sort of breaks down those stats into more specific skills that you might learn. Sven? Yes. Would you like me to explain my role, just to just explain the mechanics? So um, basically I have seven intelligence, so I roll I've got a seven. I have two for local experts. So these are um, specific skills. Um, they can be between zero and six. So I only have a two. So I really don't know much about this locality. And then I added a detail. So that's right. I've got 11. I know nothing. Whereas other people will have a lot of local knowledge. So I think that's where your skills come into it. It's the first time I've seen it in action. It's cool. Yeah, I, I, I like this way of doing it because it, it, it incorporates, you know, how... how like um, naturally talented you are at any particular one thing and it adds to that the skills that you learn over the course of your lifetime it's a bit of nature it's a bit of nurture and i think that's a really cool way of uh of doing these skill tests let's have a quick look here because you rolled quite high um mod with a 21 i can tell you a fair few bits of information um i'll let i'll let you decide how you've come across this information uh, but you know now that you've sort of heard the name pronounced correctly, maybe you've never seen it written down before. Um, you know this person to be someone called Nathan Styx Fontaine. He is a man in his middle ages. Um, you know uh, from rumors and stories that you've heard, he is a retired veteran and a club owner. And there are also rumors that he acts as sort of a local fixer in his area, um, which is, I'd have to look up exactly where he runs out of, but you know that he owns a nightclub somewhere in the eastern districts of Night City. Um, you know that he was a Militech uh, mercenary during the Fourth Corporate War. Um, you know that he retired after losing a large part of his uh, bottom jaw. Um, and you know that he established a nightclub in Westbrook um, in 2039 thereabouts. Um, and he's been acting as sort of like a local go-to guy for people who need jobs done that the government or the corporations neglect to do because it's not profitable for them. Is there a role that we can do to see whether he's a good Samaritan, whether that would be something that we'd know or we'd just find out? I would incorporate that into that uh, into that role that we just made. That's probably going to be the, uh, the, the sort of the best way to know something about someone. Um, so Foggy you know that generally speaking he is viewed favorably by the local populace in in westbrook um but seeing as though that this man is known as a fixer and a nightclub owner it 
it's not any stretch of the imagination to think that he might also have his fingers in pies that might not be completely above board or moral after all this is night city there is no one who is truly um truly above anyone else in re in regards to morals to get by in this life especially to be successful you need to have some level of cold calculation I disagree. There's no world or future in which that will be the case. But we might be looking at 99.9% .9 of the population. Uh, that is that is correct. Um, after all, um, this is a this is a fictional universe. But I would say that there are, there, there are some people out there, especially those people who are living their normal day to day lives, who you could probably consider to be morally um, unquestionable. I suppose, but in order to be successful in Night City, you got to have some skeletons in your closet. So it would not be a All stretch of the imagination. Trust no one, especially not your GM. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the uh, so uh, I I'll stop and as I look over the building, I'm going to turn to the group and go. Wait a second. Uh, take out my agent. I'm like. He's using a pseudonym. He's written down Stikes, but his name is actually Styx. Nathan Styx Fontaine. And then I rattle off all the stuff they said. He's a big deal in like the eastern part called Westbrook, which I think is a horrible name, but it is what it is. That makes no sense. Yes, but I think it's because <laughs> it's like a little river there and it's the West Brook. Oh, there's, oh, two there's a river here. Oh, that'd be filthy. Uh, to the river of sewage, yes. Oh. Um, looking around the building, Sven GM, do I see any <laughs> presence of gangers like deals going down, hangouts, um, looking into apartment buildings? Are there any sites to be seen? Give me in a area. in in your immediate area. Uh, I'll tell you what. There's no reason to believe that there is anything untowards happening, at least beyond the normal goings on of Night City. But you can give me a perception roll for sure, and we can uh, we can see what we come up with. Okay. I got twenty five. Twenty five. As far as you can tell, there's nothing happening in your uh, immediate vicinity that uh, indicates anything untowards sort of happening. A twenty five is definitely a good roll, so nothing that you can see. Um, keep in uh, mind, you are in a in an isolated park in a uh, pretty deserted part um, of Night City, surrounded by, you know, overpasses and all that kind of stuff. So. Okay. I'll just keep my eye out as we approach for any of the telltale signs. Um, do we know... Are they, are the gangers, like... Is that their, their group, or do they have subgroups or anything like that? Um, I'll, I'll get you to roll a another knowledge uh, local expert, I think it's called, if you want to get a little bit of an okay. idea of, uh, of these gangers. I, did, I, I think he specifically seems... said piranha gangers. That's going to be a really important... Um, I think oh, it, it I says I got a three. Up. Ooh, is that possible? Wait, well, I've got it rolled on the thing, and I've got a one, and there's one on the D10, so there's an exclamation mark uh -huh. near that. Okay, so I guess that means like that's bad. That's a good segue into how crits and critical misses work in this game. So Ooh. we're rolling a D10. I don't know fucking shit. If you roll a ten on that ten, you actually get to roll it again and you get to add that on top of whatever it is that you rolled in the first place. However, if, like this instance, you roll a one, mm. you have to roll that d10 again and subtract it from whatever okay, it is so the yeah, total would be. Yeah. So, so I got a one, and then next to it I've got, I rolled an eight, so it's subtracted, then it's plus my intelligence, plus my local expert, and I ended up with a three. So I don't know fucking shit. You don't know much look you're a lawman you've um you've heard the names of various um gangs in night city um you've heard of synth reapers you've heard of piranhas you've heard of maelstrom you've heard of the uh, red star legion 
piranhas. I mean, you've got to know something. Are they, are they from a galaxy far, far away, the Red Star Legion? Or are they like... Um, the name sounds pretty amazing. Did you make these up? Um, no, the Red Star Legion, I believe, is a, an actual gang in the cyberpunk universe. Right. Um, and they are not unlike our good friend uh, Redline uh, from Eastern Europe yes. for the most part. I have heard of this red for Mother Russia. Exactly. Um, you know about piranhas, I would say, um, but you don't know too much about them. If there's anyone else who would like to roll, you may do so, or uh, otherwise we can move on and uh, head towards... Move on. How are we getting there? Do we need a ride? Is it far? I can't tell by looking. Um, I can only in metres too, like... It looks like it's about 500 metres away. Um, is it safe to walk in this city? Like, I try not to, Absolutely but there are lots not. of us. And we have if, robot creatures somewhere? Um, no? I also wouldn't rely on them for protection. They are by oh, no means... Oh, so they're useless. They're just robot. cute. Uh, now, useless is a harsh word. I wouldn't say they're useless. I'd say that they have very few uses. Ah, uh, okay. So they're very near useless. Not useless. They are That's niche. great. They're very niche. Okay. okay. Well, I they're, saw they're that sweet car. Useful. You got that sweet car, yeah? I can. Car. It sounds like it could take us anywhere. I can arrange another Mine? car. Mine? Yeah. It depends oh, like, what, depends what, what the one? family multiple has around. Okay. We see okay so you have, have to call in another one. That's sweet. Yes. yes. Maybe we could get a horse and cart. Perhaps. Perhaps. That would be great. I've never seen a horse before. <laughs> yeah, they're usually eating around here, aren't they? I heard that I heard they're good with short salad. I, I had my agent open. I'm looking at uh, Futuber, and I go, uh, he, he's going to pay for the car, and I just put away my Uber app from the future. Oh, so <laughs> Futuber. Dopinda. Actually, there is a service not unlike that uh, in this particular universe. What's it called? I'm not sure if it would be it's operating at this point in time. Um, I'm I'm blanking on the name, but it is a um, it is an automatically cyberpunk. Um, hmm. Can we say that it is future Uber, so future Uber, and just say it's the initial app? I'm trying to. I'm trying to think. Make it count. Um, but in the meantime, Redline's our future. Ali said, "Delamain." Delamain. Ali doesn't Thank know. You. What about Thank you, Delamain. I would. I would have to look into the uh, into the information to see whether or not it would be at operating at this point in time. I'd imagine it probably is. Um, but basically, it's like an Uber, but it's operated by um, essentially something that is akin to an artificial intelligence. It's not an artificial intelligence because in this universe, um, artificial intelligences have actually been outlawed and have been blocked out of Night City um, and out of society in general uh, by something they call the black wall um, because there was a time when artificial intelligences um, rebelled uh, against humanity um, and now all of humanity is protected from ai by this uh, essentially what is like a wall of black ice and black ice being like um, viruses and computer programs a firewall a firewall exactly exactly like a firewall um but infinitely cooler anyway how do we approach uh, yeah. i i definitely put away my app as i hear that uh a good friend redline is calling up his services which won't cost me a cent mm -hmm. right so um <laughs> oh, if we got I, stuck too i could probably call in a fan i can get us viewers but they're not very very nice ones it's all they have available at this time and as he finishes saying it you hear this sort of like screechy kind of <laughs> crunchy uh tiny little hatchback like a toyota yaris but all rusty and you know kind of like a wobbly front wheel rock up um let's go this is it you see a a gentleman uh jump out of the driver's seat he's like 
So, uh, he's got like a pot belly. He has like a flannel shirt, which is sort of two sizes too big. He's wearing a wife beater underneath, and you can see all of his chest hair sort of hanging out. He's um, he's got like one of those hats that has like the two flaps which cover your ears, and he sort of gives you uh-huh. a um, like a it. not even cold a toothless grin with a fingerless glove wave <laughs> um, to you, Redline, as he uh, sort of tucks his hand into the pockets of his flannel and. Uh, ducks into the traffic heading off down the street your vehicle awaits see it's Yay. good yes nice i honestly uh, I don't know what car. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll see um red line jump in the driver's seat right and um i'm in the front and yeah you you say that now um but as soon as he gets <laughs> behind the, the wheel he's not holding onto the wheel or anything and he just sort of like flops back as if he's it's not even like he's unconscious but you see those little wires come out from the ends of his fingertips and just jack into the like the dashboard of the car but he's otherwise just like that's a cyborg car i'll walk over to redline while he's jacked in and i'll just like wet willy i I can i can still perceive that oh man i'm so sorry i thought you were all out of it i was having a bit of fun and he get his other hand and that's disgusting you I'm think sorry. my car is bad? That is terrible. <laughs> maybe, should should maybe. we go? Because maybe like yeah, they're going to throw off an eleven-year-old next. Shall we go? Yes. Everybody okay. in. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. In the car, foggy bottom. We're going shopping. You all pile into this uh, this Thornton Galena, the cyberpunk version of a <laughs> Datsun. As you open the uh, passenger uh, passenger side door, a bottle of vodka audibly drops out, um, and you can see the floor is littered with cans, is rusted. You can see the uh, the street below, um, and yes, as uh, like, Sven, don't take um, don't take uh, my car into this, please. <laughs> we like, we don't talk about your car. <laughs> it's so filthy. I, I I bet you if I opened up the the uh, the passenger side door, a bottle of vodka would literally drop out. <laughs> um, and I would enjoy that bottle of vodka. So maybe I'll do that during the short break. Talk about short breaks. We will be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, stick with us. Uh, we're going to go on a break. And uh, while we're gone, why not uh, donate some money to our fundraiser for the Starlight uh, Children's Foundation? Um, and we'll be back in uh, just a couple minutes. Goodbye. And we're back. Um, thank you to everyone who Ooh. stuck around during that short rest. And thank you for donating uh, two and a half million. It was a long short rest. Sorry, everybody. Two and a half million dollars to our chosen uh, fundraiser for this year. It's a, it's a great result and uh, we really appreciate it. Um, it was a little bit of a longer break. Um, some of us had. It's because I hadn't eaten dinner. <laughs> some of us had burritos to eat and you can't, you can't rush that. No. It would just be... Sometimes it rushes when it comes out. I just can't think <laughs> if I haven't eaten. I was just starting to be like... Whoa. The All orchid right. song after would... that was the best. <laughs> I didn't even hear sometimes what it was. Ru- I'm just... He- he goes, sometimes the rush is when it comes out, and then there was like an awkward silence. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't even know what to say to that. Um, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> unfortunately, well, Moving you know, on. when the burrito comes in, it, it usually comes out a lot quicker than it went in, you know? Like, oh, especially yeah, when it's okay. a, a spicy burrito, extra jalapenos, oh, oh. habanero salsa. Yep. Yeah. Um, yep. Fun. Great visual. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, you can't oh say things like that to a group of role players. We 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 imagine things immediately. It, it, uh, it, he it, said we it, we. It always invokes, <laughs> and that see? we're inventive creatures. Okay, let's play. I want to I want to get into nope. this freaking building. Like I'm just I'm just imagining children being yeeted off a building. So <laughs> come on. let's go. Every every five minutes spent on the road is another Yeet. five year old. Yeet. Skirt skirt. Yeet. 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 <laughs> Go. All right. Um, <laughs> now I don't even know what to what to what to say. But we're in a car, anymore. ready to go. We finished eating. Yes. All right. Uh, maybe uh, we can pull up a little bit further away and sort of scope the building out before we. Mm. So. Yep. Or did you want to drive into the foyer? <laughs> we. We I end. Just drive. You tell me where. 
We... I'm having flashbacks. <laughs> Sorry. We end <laughs> that scene as we look into the red taillights of the Thornton Galena as it passes into the morning traffic of Night City. And for a second, maybe those red taillights invoke the images of that crimson skyline. As the car pulls into traffic, um, those of you piled into this tiny little hatchback might notice that some of the interiors um, stitching has worn away and some springs are poking up through um, the interior of the vehicle. However, the one thing that you notice is that no matter how dilapidated the vehicle looks, it purrs like is a kitten. Is that a boombox on the roof, though? I imagine it is. Is it? Red line? <laughs> Is it yes. a green box or is it a good car this time? No, no, it's definitely really still the green box. Car. This car is the one thing that connects across all universes. Um, and you quickly uh, make your way across this, um, the confines of Night City, darting in and out of traffic uh, with expert ease. Redline, this is your place in the driver's seat. This is where you feel most comfortable. Uh, Colby immediately vomits. Um, and really, it just adds Holding. to the overall decor of, of the car. You can't even tell um, because it just it sinks uh, through the rust holes in the ground and falls out the bottom of the vehicle. Um, and before- I just offer him a dopey's hat to, wipe, to catch and slash wipe himself up with. There you go, my friend. <laughs> Sounds well, good. He- He's never going to forgive me. Uh, you, you, you look back and you see four robots um, hoofing it uh, behind the vehicle at, uh, at full pace. Um, and before long, um, you pull up um, outside of Mega Block H10 as depicted in that city, um, that cityscape that you see on the, on the VTT. So I'll tell you what, let's... Um, Let's give you a little bit of flavor text and we'll uh, we'll go ahead and go to the map. So you see this concrete megastructure looming overhead over 100 stories into the skyline of Night City, effectively blocking out any of the early morning light. The upper floors of the structure are still clearly under construction with digitally operated cranes working night and day. The imposing structure's walls are dotted with reinforced louvered windows and neon-lit data screens that project soulless corporate advertisement on a relentless 24-hour cycle, reminding all the citizens of Night City that not even a nuclear fallout can stem the tide of corporate capitalism. Let's take it to the map, shall we? Take it to the bridge. When you said that we pulled up Sven, I imagined like all four of us rolling out of the car, handguns drawn, saying, drop the kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's one way we could play it. <laughs> <laughs> the Seinfeld song. Um, all right, so you can see the vehicle on the map, the Thornton Galena. Oh, you yay. have pulled up in a parking space across the street from mm-hmm. Mega Block H10. Immediately in the area, you can see what appears to be the entrance to an underground car park that is currently blocked by a boom arm. Beside the boom arm, you can see what appears to be a small booth containing... And there's a person. A What appears to be a hired security guard. Now, just to the north of that, you can see two pairs of concrete stairs leading up and into the main entrance and into the building's foyer. To the uh, north, you can also see the street uh, continues up and towards the uh, west. 
And you can see from your position as you drive around and past the building uh, to take in a little bit more information before you actually, you know, hop out and, and, and start this off in, uh, in earnest. You can see that there's also an alleyway which appears to be um, like dotted with debris and discarded construction materials that leads possibly back around behind the building. Um, but as far as you can tell, those are your three main uh, entrances into the building. Red line pulls up into a car park across the street. No one at this point seems to be um, paying attention to what you guys are doing as far as the pedestrians are concerned. And at this point in the morning, there is quite a fair bit of foot traffic. Looking out, you can see some people jumping into vehicles every now and then. If you spend a little bit of time, you might see a vehicle pull up uh, to that boom gate that leads to the underground car park coming out of the building. You see the boom gate raise automatically and then go back down as they exit and pull off into the into the city every now and then a vehicle drives past and um that's the situation as it is what do you do can i ask because i want a reason to use my wardrobe and style skill which i was wondering whether fuck that would work can i ask whether we would blend in or whether we need to change anything if we just get out of this car um well, I think this is a good uh, a good moment to go across the board and find out what each of you are wearing and and kind of what you look like. Let's start with you, Jem. What are you wearing? What do you look like? Uh, I'm trying to remember. I I wear bright colours, so my style is Asia pop. So I'm wearing I wear a leather jacket because I couldn't afford a top. <laughs> so I'm wearing a jacket, but it's a pastel purple leather jacket. I'm wearing black, bright blue pants. My hair is amazing colours, but I don't stand out too much because in Night City, everyone dresses pretty cool. Um, I don't have anything that I'm carrying that's awkward or that would stand out except for my tent and stuff, but I'll leave that in the car if I need to. I always replace that. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm short. I look like I wouldn't be a good rapper, but I am. Um, it's true. In Night City... It's not just about what you can do, it's about how you look while doing it. So yes, if you were to be walking around um, on the streets of Townsville, you would stick out like a sore thumb. However, here in Night City, um, that is not the case. You are fairly confident that you would be able to um, step out of this vehicle and not to draw too much attention. Um, as for the rest of you, uh, Colby, do you think uh, your character would stand out uh, out of a crowd, or? Um, I don't know. He's kind of wearing like a a brownish kind of leathery French coat with the sleeves cut off. It's got ratty sort of torn edges to it. Underneath, you can see what looks like an old um, navy blue like SWAT team uniform but the badges are ripped off so you can see where the patch was is darker than the rest of it uh he's got fingerless gloves ratty brown hair golden sort of eyes that sort of flick around sometimes so he's not really colorful he's kind of grungy mm. does that st would that stand out still stylish yeah he's got like a five o'clock shadow so he's not really mm. into the whole hair scene that a lot of people here are yep. sort of into Night City, if anything, is a melting pot of various mm. cultures. You could see anything from, you know, hardcore, underground, uh, London punk aesthetics, all the way to people who have completely altered their looks using cybernetics. I would say that you probably don't stand out too much. Maybe that blue um, SWAT uh uniform that you're wearing might raise an eyebrow to someone who is interacting with you directly um i'll say it's kind of like under a trench coat but you can see it because the sleeves are sort of cut off the trench coat so that's the only time you can see it yeah i guess uh, it's sort of akin to like a an old army's person's uniform that they would wear if they got it from like a you know those stores where army people dump their stuff surplus yeah like disposals yeah. 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 See, yeah, that could be a fashion accessory. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it 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 might be a question that someone asks. Hey, maybe uh, were you on the force or anything like that? But it's not something that anyone's mm -hmm. going to ping as being uh, completely 
you know, out of the ordinary. Foggy, I, I wouldn't imagine, is wearing anything or carrying any. Uh, let me put it this is If anyone's carrying any heavy weapons on them, um, even assault rifles, anything that cannot be um, effectively stored on one's body without drawing attention, please do let me know. But I imagine Foggy is probably not. Uh, yes, my uh, heavy pistol actually says it is hideable. Yep. I looked mm-hmm. that up. Correct. Any firearms that are handguns um, are concealable. Uh, same goes with submachine guns, I believe. And it could also be argued, I think, that some shotguns would be concealable as well. Um, that kind of depends on us, I suppose, and, and sort of how we describe it. Um, um, yeah, I've got a sawn off heavy- yeah, I got a handgun in a hidden holster pocket, which is inside my body. Nice. And uh, I've got an assault <laughs> rifle that I'll leave in the car. You got an assault yeah. rifle that you're going to leave in the vehicle? Okay, that's no mm-hmm. problem at all. Um, I, know, I, know, I know where this body pocket is. Yeah, I'm Maybe a prison wall. Hey, give me a minute. Um, <laughs> it says literally, a hidden holster can store a weapon. It is concealed somewhere. Inside your body. <laughs> Ew, there's not many places. I, I don't like. Freeze! Hang on, I'll get my gun. And pull out the. the Just one. looking after our puppy. Um, I can't help but feel like that was left intentionally vague um, by uh, uh, Mike Pondsmith, I think it is, who wrote this. I might be wrong, but uh, correct me in the chat if I'm wrong. Red line. I imagine. You're probably yeah. not wearing anything that uh, sets you out. No, so I, I got um, pretty well street active wear, it's like leisure wear, like you know, sort of gym clothes, <laughs> but pants style. So they'd be like a, a tactile kind of stretchy, um, uh, like a Gore-Tex kind of fabric that's stylized <laughs> more modernly. Um, but I've got the big bulky trench coat jacket, which is more. For like riding and stuff like that if i find myself on like a motorbike or something like that it's got like hard um rubbery leather or kind of like you know it's kind of like a like hard plastic pads on the outside like an armor of the forearms so that you know it's just a bit of extra protection um but yeah tight fitting shirt um very athletic looking eastern european man all right i dig it um I, i'm i'm attracted to red line don't know why um because oh no, it's the harpies all over again. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's nothing here that's going to immediately draw any attention, but um, I like to let people use their skills. If this is a situation where you think um, you want to be able to blend in with crowds, you can take a moment here to use your personal grooming skill and we'll do a roll. And if it's successful, uh, I might give you uh, an extra bonus to roles in the future um, if you're trying to blend in and uh, sort of not draw attention to yourself so if you want to take a moment here can but I, yes can i do it for the whole group and be our stylist yes absolutely you can All do right. that but i i do want to keep in mind um that you don't have access to like changes of clothes or anything like that um mm. So it's going to be not easy to do, um, and yeah, I think uh, it could be like a '90s movie makeover situation. Yeah, just des- like, describe to me then, how, what what you're doing and what you have available for you to do that. Well, basically, I'm able to um, in my bag. I just have like simple cosmetics, so I have like just a concealer. I'm I'm, I'm good at makeup. So basically, I can look. I can make someone look a bit less tired, a bit more per- perky. I'm used to like doing a lot of hard drugs because I'm actually a party person. So I need to be good at that. So I might notice someone if it's tired. I want us to blend in. Uh, at the moment, I'm looking like shit. So now it's like eight in the morning. I'm not used to being awake at this time in this world. Um, so yeah, I just want to do a roll, see whether I can make us blend in a little bit. Um, and I got 19. So that's cool. Absolutely. <laughs> um, with it, yeah, I'm going to give you all a bonus to your roles. Uh, do keep that in mind. Keep me honest with that. If we're doing a role uh, sometime over the course of this where you are trying to blend in with the crowd and not draw attention to yourselves, let's say something, um, something like quite 
loud happens, uh, combat, and you try to blend into a crowd to get out of that situation, for instance, you're going to get a bonus to that roll. So keep that in mind and do keep me honest with that. Um, and do you, I imagine you all just sort of go along with this? You explain uh, what you're going mm. to be doing, Violet? Yeah. No, I, it's just I have an idea. Well, do you have an idea? What's your idea? I, I have idea. You are... Uh... You rapper, famous one, yeah. huh? Yeah, yeah you oh, make us Jimmy. look like you make us look like your crew, and we go in front. We say you're doing video, and can we film in your building? Because it looks oh, like perfect good for idea. the video. Oh yes, I yeah. reckon we could do that. Yeah, well, we've got a camera person. We've got me. We've got security, and you're our driver. Yes, I'd be chauffeur. Yes. Oh. In a very nice vehicle, I must. I like this a lot. What? Why? Why don't we just go and ask to go in the front door? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because... But no, we do that, but we have a cover story, so we okay, can... That's a good backup, okay? Yeah, yeah. If they don't it's let us in, if they don't let us in, we're filming a music video. And these are the best dancers. After and you did it, the Thank you for that. Thank you. Because, yeah, we were going to make it really epic. <laughs> so the question is, you have the underground car park, you have the main entrance. The underground car park seems to be secure by the boom arm and a security card uh, guard, and yep. the main entrance seems to be just open to traffic. I reckon we, we go up? in the main entrance. Oh. No! <laughs> uh, can we do a scan to see when a car's going into the underground? Like, uh, we're a distance away, aren't we? Correct. You're across the street. Uh, could I uh, look, just one second? And I'm going to try and get an angle so I can look. Use my cybernetic eye, which can zoom in. Okay. And I'm going to watch the interaction because I want to see if the doors opening automatically when the cars approach, or whether the guy is actually opening it. All right. So, is there a chip? Like, if we get a car that's left, will we be able to just drive straight in and it'll open for us? I'm sort of. Is it automatic or is it the guy operating the booth? <laughs> Roll a perception check for me and give yourself a bonus for your cybernetic eye because you can zoom in and get a better uh, look at this. Is it a plus four for that? Uh, plus two, I believe. Like it, it do, oh, for that one, no, plus two is for my hearing. Um, okay. That one, it doesn't say, it just says I have up to 400 times magnification. Okay, that's a lot of magnification. Give yourself a plus Up four. Two. Yeah, awesome. All right, perception. Uh, that'll be a 24. 24. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just going to have a quick look at something here, uh, just to give you guys a little bit of an idea of what a 24 actually translates to in this. So there is a table here that tells me uh, a list of difficulty values. Um, simple is something that most people could do without thinking. That is difficult to value nine. So 24 is what we call incredible. Only the very best can accomplish it. Um, so I think this game's broken. Oh, what yeah. just happened to my Discord? There it is. Um, yeah, that shouldn't be happening. But okay, so with the 24, you spend a little bit of time here watching cars coming in and going. You don't notice the security guard doing anything. And with your amazing abilities to magnify your vision, you notice that there is or what appears to be some kind of um, number plate reader built into the boom arm itself on both sides as the vehicles are pulling up it is reading those number plates and automatically raising however you do see one car pull up to the car park and the boom arm does not immediately rise and the security guard goes over and talks to the occupant of the vehicle for a little while and then eventually the security guard goes back seems to swipe something uh, inside of that booth and the arm goes up and the vehicle goes in. So you get the sense that this is an automatically operated thing, but if there is some kind of situation where someone's, it maybe, maybe it malfunctions, maybe there's a guest, someone who is meant to be here, um, they can convince the security guard to open uh, for them. All right. I just turned to them and said, listen, uh, we could... It looks like it is a car, normal plate reader, but um, the message did say no collateral. 
So whether you consider stealing a car collateral or maybe we just... Uh, I can try and hack the gate. We used to do things with number plates all the time back in the f army. <clears throat> uh, army, huh? You military We walk man. in. I can give it a crack. I'll open up my agent all right. and I'll try to right. um, put our number plate onto the database to let us in the gate. Nice. Um, the thing that we're talking about here, unfortunately, I believe would require a net runner. Um, you are trying to access the net architecture. Unfortunately, your data pad is not, uh, does not give you the ability to do so. What you require is a cyber deck and an access point. <laughs> Doesn't work. <laughs> Sorry, boys. I thought I could, Try. but I can. Looks like I've locked out of the network. It's a retired veteran thing, I guess. <laughs> um, you? you know, technology is changing so quickly these days. What once you could do, maybe with your iPad, you can no longer do. Um, there is a particular role in Cyberpunk Red, which is called a Netrunner, and they have a very special ability to access net architecture net architecture usually uh, incorporates automated systems like this if you had a net runner if you had someone able to access the net architecture with what they call a cyber deck you would definitely be able to do that however that's not to say that you can't if you could get access to that security booth you believe you would be able to raise that arm um, via some tinkering with that equipment or maybe a direction from our wrapper with the front the uh key card that the security guard used do the koala bear and the rocking chair one that will do it for sure that's what i'm thinking i think we might just yes. walk in and yes. right uh before just we do normal and if we get caught out I... i'll just i'll just start rapping you just uh, attract his attention uh, with the rapping and he do the key card hacky hack in the sorry <laughs> uh just yes, quickly uh, I just hand uh, a pair of binoculars out to whoever is going to grab them. Yoink. Awesome. Uh, and I say, maybe we have a quick look. Uh, look for smoke. Because uh, I'm a very streetwise person. I did a lot of drugs when I was um, infiltrating groups. And I say, we look for like, it's an open building. There's some, un un maybe we can see area where they're cooking. Mm. We might know where to go for the gangers. All right, um, yeah. Valiant, can I get you to add binoculars to your inventory? Uh, obviously, I'll remove them from mine. Remove them from yours, yes. Um, and is that what you're going to do? You're going to have a look to see if you can see anything untowards from the building, or yeah. And I'm I'm going to scan with my eye, so we're both looking with telescopic stuff. All right, we'll start with uh, with Valiant's check. Um, do you want to make a perception check? And I'm going to give you a plus two to your perception check with the binoculars. I'm going to say that probably not the same bonus that you'll get with a, uh, a cybernetic eye, but uh, I will I got give a you a one minus. again, and I rolled a two for the minus, so I got a nine total. A nine total? So, yeah. You're not and what did you much. give me a plus with? A plus two with the binoculars. So that'll be... 11. 11. Unfortunately, just having a quick look at my table, um, I don't think that's going to quite be enough. Yeah, no, I'm going to say probably not enough right. to well, do that. Yeah, I'll probably say to the group, um, if they're cooking in there, I can't see it. In the meantime, because I'm not used to sitting still, I've got some synth coke in my bag and I'm going to take some. <laughs> <laughs> All right. um, I just imagine I take off the binoculars and just hear this like What a horrible time to be scanning a building I could have got the pop star, rap star doing drugs But no, you were distracted I was just I was distracted right. time. I get Watch out, out. don't get distracted um, I am just having a look here um, And... Are you actually taking synth coke? Yes. All right. Um, and I get my reflexes increased by one point for four hours. Um, so I can go up to eight. But um, you can occasionally tell me I'm feeling paranoid. 
and I should roleplay accordingly. <laughs> If I wasn't already addicted to synth coke, I am now. Well addicted, my reflex is lowered by two points unless I'm currently experiencing the primary effect. So I've created an addiction now, but I've got heaps of cash, so don't worry. And while addicted to synth coke, the GM will occasionally tell you you crave more synth coke and you should do your best to role play accordingly. But I'm alright for four hours in game, alright? So plus one to reflexes and Sven's got to remember addicted to synth coke. You can see him writing. <laughs> I love it. So if I do a reflex roll, I'm ready to go. My reflexes aren't great. <laughs> For those people watching Sorry, at home, <laughs> trigger warning, there is uh, drug use in this particular stream. Um, yes, no, you definitely, uh, but that's cyberpunk, you should know that. Uh, yeah, you, you have some synth coke and you, uh, you, you use some synth coke and yeah, your reflexes go up yep. by one point. Um, yep. I'm now permanently addicted, but I'm right. Let's go. Prone to paranoid ideation. Okay, that's amazing. Um, okay. Um, Come on, someone's going to see us. Someone's going to see us. We need to get in the building now. Are you going to? Are we going to park red line? Are you already Where paranoid? Park? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Park, well, Would you like to parked. quickly do your check before you hop out of the vehicle to see if you can see the smoke uh, mod? Uh, I rolled a one, I believe. Nope, you don't see Sorry. shit. <laughs> yeah. uh, As I'm walking across the road, can I say I see my robots and Dopey goes to like run across the traffic to get to me and I'm just like, no, 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 back, back. Almost gets cleaned up by a, uh, a Thornton bus as it just like oh, passes like, oh, cute. by. He oh, just lets cute. out this horn that sounds like, I'm walking here. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like Bumblebee style from the radio. Um, I want to know what these look like. You're going to have to draw them. I, I've been in two games with Valen, and both games he said, I'm walking here. I love it. Uh, yeah, uh, the other one was uh, Gu Guido with a New York accent. Oh, yeah. No, that was Waji. Waji, sorry, Waji. Yeah, All yeah. right. Okay, so um, exiting the vehicle. the rap star yep. on approach. Yep. Door opening. Um, You've got your camera out. Um, you notice a couple of people um, looking at you as you sort of get out of the vehicle um, because you're following along with the camera, sort of making it look like uh, the person that you're filming is, you know, someone special. And everyone in Night City is looking for the opportunity to become someone. So uh, you do you do catch the attention of a couple of onlookers as you cross the road, um, and you and I do my best to look famous. No, no one bring attention away, to the no. famous person. Mm -hmm. You look, no, you look cool as fuck. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt. I am being. And we go up the yeah. stairs, and you ascend the stairs into the lobby, and into, into the Nakamori Plaza. I do it two <laughs> steps at a time. Hell yes! And you enter. I'm bounding with energy. You 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 enter the lobby high on synth coke, um, and the and the lobby of this uh, megalithic structure. Uh, features what appears to be like a like a hollow sort of courtyard um, and mm -hmm. its ceiling is looming like nearly a kilometer overhead there's neon lights um, that buzz over a singular noodle shop in the center of the courtyard and you can see an elderly Asian man as he shuffles back and forth between steaming bowls of uh, what you assume to be synthetic noodles um, you can see oh. that there are unoccupied boutique shops that line the outside of the courtyard. They're boarded That's up. That's like Townsville. They're boarded up. They're graffitied <laughs> in like a kaleidoscope of colors. Nestled between two as yet unfinished storefronts uh, is what appears to be a gun store. Um, you can see there's a neon lit sign above it as well. It depicts uh, the image of a revolver firing around, shattering a sword. And you see uh, there is a lone security guard leaning against a concrete device um, their attention squarely on their agent. They don't notice you entering into the lobby. I just missed most of that, which fits my character. So I'm... Got me at synthetic noodles. I want to know what's in them. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. Um, it's, it's basically me going. You see a couple of people uh, coming and going, people heading inside. You see some people stumbling as if under the influence of maybe narcotics, maybe alcohol. You're not quite sure, uh, but there is a little bit of foot traffic here, but no one sort of notices you as you enter the lobby. What do you want to do? 
Is right, there anyone just... whose job is to watch the lobby? Can we look around and see whether... I know that you said that there's a security guard with an agent, but there's no reception. No. It's just no. basically we're walking into like a shopping centre. It's basically just like walking into the ground floor of an apartment building for all intents and purposes. Just think Wait. of an apartment building on steroids. Yep. Um, I'd want to try the lift and see if we need a key code or need a card. Yeah, you do see a pair of what looks like industrial elevators um, and they have these like me metallic uh, like um, almost like industrial doors, like garage doors that you can sort of see through. Um, you can see that there is a small uh, data screen uh, for each of the two elevators. And you, as you approach the elevator, you do actually notice in the far corner is what appears to be a single metal door um, with one of those <laughs> like long bars that, that they have on like fire exits. And it has like a small window in it as well. Great, well, I can go up two stairs at once, so I can do whatever. Oh, <laughs> well, we know these um, guys are operating on one of the floors in the upper part of the building. Mm. Our agent said that there were people being thrown outside of them, so we maybe look for some damage. of the... Any blood stains? Can I use perception to have a look around? Yeah, absolutely. Roll me a perception check. Can I look for, like, people scratching their arms and shit? Yeah, sure. Also, roll me a uh, perception check, I suppose. I'm going to look for inspiration. Eighteen. Eighteen? Composition. I got eighteen. Yeah, eighteen as well. I got an eighteen on composition, so I'm writing a sweet rhyme. We all got an eighteen. No way. Look at that. That zoom was perfect. <laughs> That's how we do on Christmas role-playing games. We get three or four people to roll the exact same role at the exact same time. That's not that's that's easy to deal with as a um, yeah. as a GM. Okay, uh, so you all got you all you all got an eighteen. Um, let's start with you, Froth. You were the first person to bring it up. You have a look around. You do see that there is a section of the lobby floor um, which appears to actually have been cut out. Mm -hmm. What? There is a section... Like they've replaced the tile thing. Like, there's still a hole in the ground. Um, it oh. appears as though... Is there though ropes around it? There's no ropes around it. It appears as though someone has used a power tool to cut the uh, concrete slab out. Um, That's dangerous. And... Is it person-sized, Ben? It is um, roughly... <laughs> oh, um... Yeah, I'd say probably three feet across in, in either direction. So I'd start looking for stuff to put around that because I don't want anyone to fall down it. Because I'm Australian and I care about people. It'll be like, what's she doing? I'm getting, I'm getting chairs. Um, I thought you were going to say it was like the Scooby-Doo cutout of the kid falling through the floor. No. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been like, much uh, better. No, I'll... Uh, um, or in the exact um, shape of a human I, going like I, this. Um, you said there was some guys staggering. Uh, I've got an ability here called uh, Human Perception. Okay. All right. And it's like for reading body language in that and trying to discern their emotional state. So basically, I'm trying to tell if these guys are high as... Uh... You do notice one gentleman sort of leaving, uh, exiting the uh, industrial elevators. And as he walks out, you notice him sort of, um, and it stands out to you specifically because you saw someone do something very similar. Not moments before, he sort of <coughs> rubs his nose <laughs> as he exits the elevator. You have a closer look and you do notice that his pupils do seem to be a little bit more dilated and there's a little bit of a spring in his step. He's dressed um in a kind of cheap corporate suit um and he's carrying a, a briefcase he looks like he's oh. a man in his early 30s um quite tall and just an average build um it's sort of like a dark dark navy suit with a small like little 
handkerchief thing sort of hanging out um but the the lining of the suit sort of has this very futuristic retro tech sort of lining to it that sort of reflects the light can can i oh. ask is this person a fan let's find out shall we shall we do a roll to find yep. out if this person's a fan talk to me about your yep. ability here so basically, if someone isn't my active enemy and we're not in combat, I can roll a do a roll to create a fan. I need to get a DV8 for a single fan. I need to get DV10 for a group and DV12 for a huge group of people. Um, so if I roll it, yep, DV8, yep. DV8. So I nice. rock a boy. Yeah, <laughs> rocker boy can convince a fan to do a major favor for the rocker boy. Go to bed with the rocker boy. I'll put a word in for them. So basically, it's how I influence people with the sheer presence of personality. Um, it's basically, they could be a rocker or a cult leader. As I grow in skill, it can get more intense as well. Okay. Um, yeah. So I can do a charismatic impact role because I reckon it just, just with the vibe, I reckon we could get along as well. All right. Um, I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to allow the bonus, um, that you rolled earlier to apply here. Um, because you sort of were trying to make it appear as though you are someone of like imports um, yeah. with your friend Foggy Foggy Bottom Boys. Um, so yeah. yeah, give yourself a give yourself a plus one to this role as well. All right, so I'm going to do a charismatic impact role. It's 19 plus one, so I get a 20. Um, so that is a success. Let me have a quick look yes. at your character Touchdown. here. Like as you sort of uh, you grab a, a like a chair or something like that you start dragging it loudly across the courtyard you get this guy's <laughs> attention for a moment you actually see the security guard look up and raise an eyebrow but you also catch the attention of this guy and he looks over and he does a double take he's like oh my god it in night city it what it cut is it, is it you is it really you and he starts making his way over towards you um what do you do I say, g'day, how are you going? Because I'm just, my thing is just being a nice Australian person. But I'm like, do you know what? We're actually here. We want to film. We just, I'm really drawn to this, um, this tower. I was wondering if you could do us a huge favor and show us around. I mean, absolutely. I can't believe. But, but keep it on the, keep it on the down low because oh, everything we right. see here, I'm going to use for inspo and I don't want to be taken. All right. I can't believe that you're filming a, 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 a video right here in my in my hometown in Night City. Yeah. I didn't even know that you were in Night City, man. I haven't, been, I haven't been here for long. I came over via blimp. You know, as you knew, I was in Australia. Like, I've only been here for a little while. And yeah, this is one of the first projects I'm working on. So it'd be great if you could um, show us around. What's your role here? I mean... I, I, I just live here, man. Like I, I've been working as an oh, intern cool. uh, over at Bio Biotechnica for like seven years or something like that. Now I've almost finished my internship. I'm on my way to the top. Let me tell you right now. And you can see his pupils Wait. are like dilated. They're basically like dinner plates. What's and this guy's bouncing What's your name? So I'll put you in my next my next sick beat. What's oh, your name? Oh my my name um my name is um um Stimpy. <laughs> All right, Stimpy. Um, do you want to take us to the elevator and we'll start? How long do you have? All right, absolutely. Oh, I mean, I, I've got to be at work and like, and he, he checks his watch. I, I have to be at work about half an hour ago. So, hey, what, what am I going to do? I'm probably going to get fired, right? So, I might as well make this the uh, the day of my life. I'm already meeting one of my friends. I have all of your underground stuff, man. I can't believe I'm meeting you right now. This is great. You ready to go, everyone? Oh, and when yeah. I say you need to go, just go, be quiet, because otherwise you'll interrupt the flow. He's very loud. He's I, loud. I put the camera down uh, after noticing a bit, and I just say, I, you missed some. <laughs> <laughs> and he wipes, he quickly wipes No, no, not, not to him, to her. Oh, oh I'm like, okay. yeah, yeah, it comes with the territory. Okay, I'm ready. Kill me. Just see that, guys? That was me slyly letting, know, letting him know that she gets high. Ah. All right. Yes, I know yes. This is this is I mean, I thought I was going to have fucking the worst day of my life, but the worst day of my life just turned into one of the best days of my life. Can't believe. And these are like what your groupies? 
Oh, this is my um, personal Ooh. security. Yeah. My driver, who's amazing, and yeah. he, he's a good good at hooking up all kinds of stuff. And um, my right wonderful on. cameraman, who's actually a reporter. So, yeah, we're legit. Right on, man. You want some stuff? Man. Yeah, they, they say this has 100 stories, but soon 101. I dig it. <laughs> Look, I know all the best places right here in Mega Block H10. There's not much going on here, man. They're still halfway under construction. The elevators themselves are a bit sketchy, but, you know, they hold up. There's never been any incidents with them. Come on, I'll show you around. He makes his way over yeah. towards those industrial elevators, presses a button on the, one of the data pads, and after a moment, one of the, the, the doors open up, and he ushers you all or, like, indicate, invites you onto the elevator itself. I would say to Colby on the way, you have a uh, radio communicator earpiece. You have one? Uh, yeah, I've, I've got one. It's how I keep in touch with my great friends. Let's communicate on that if need be. If we need to keep the, the talking topics, uh, what do you say, um, uh, secret between us. And you, cameraman, do you have a, a radio communicator? No, but I have uh, audio enhancements for lip reading and hearing crazy distances. So I heard everything you said to him. We're good. Very good. What if I yell? <laughs> and it, it will come in loud. I'll hear it. <laughs> like that one? <laughs> yes, yes. But uh, it does not hurt. It just stalls. Oh, oh very good. All right. I'll, I'll say along the, the comlink line, I'll say... We, we need to ask this guy where he got his drugs from. Mm, yes, my good friend. Could we, uh, yeah. would you like to trade some, um, you know, some stuffs? Where do you get your stuffs from? Perhaps the stuffs I get is better, huh? Yes, mm, maybe. It's good stuff, trust me. And that is me talking to the, um, to the dude later. The rusty iron doors to these industrial elevators sort of slide shut with a clang. You can see that uh, all four walls of the elevator, three walls, I should say, uh, uh, with the exception of like the door, are sort of covered in these data screens, which are running more of these um, just relentless, um, sexualized, uh, over-violence advertisements for various um, products and services in Night City. And the elevator um, is sort of stationary at this point because he hasn't actually punched in where he wants to go. And he looks at you and he raises an eyebrow red line and he looks back towards um, you, um, Violet. And he's like, he cool or? Um... Oh, yeah, he, he hooks me up. Yes. Um, I told you. He's, he's my, he's my he's, you know, he's my personal fixer. So. Mm. Yeah, and I'm trying to find the best supply in the city, but yeah, please remove this from the um from the video. <laughs> we'll be doing it later. Yes, this part not record, cameraman. Thank you, please. Nah, man, you need to record <laughs> all of this. This is this is the raw stuff. This is the real heart and soul of Night City. You need to capture. I just every... don't want to break the heart of Australia. Well, this will be on this on the only fans only. Look, I am. <laughs> yeah, this is for premium subscribers. I don't know yeah, if like I should be. I don't know if I should be telling you this. He looks kind of hesitant. What do you do? Um, I'll I say rolls. Come on, <laughs> look at us, really. <laughs> like we not know. I, I can roll persuasion, or I, I can really do um, wardrobe and style. Oh, oh, you could interrogate him, yeah. Well, like that. Yeah. What do you want to do? Do you I'll, want to um, persuade or interrogate? I'll just I think point persuade like a, probably better. I'll, I'll, okay, you do that then. I don't know, but what we could do is you could do it in a persuasive way because you're like an ex-cop, so you know how to it, you know how to um, interrogate without it seeming that way. I'll yeah. tell you what. Okay, yeah. Let's make this an assisted roll, Gem. I'll get you to roll. Uh, we'll, we'll do a good cop, bad cop routine. Roll a persuasion check for me. If it's a successful check, we're going to add a bonus to the interrogation. It's nineteen. It is a successful check. Um, Valiant. I'll get you to roll your interrogation. I wanted to, I want you to tell me exactly how you interrogate this guy. Okay. I'll while we're in the elevator and the doors are shut, I'll um I'll edge close to him in like a threatening way, but not really a threatening way. So he feels a little conf confined and I'll put like a light finger on on his chest and I'll say um Now this is 
This is Violet. This is... You know who she is. You would hate it if... All of her fans found out that you were the one that killed her buzz. No. <laughs> Sometimes fans can get really violent. We don't want anything to happen to you. And I'll like tap his cheek like that. Hell yes. You see a single drop of sweat sort of roll down the side of his face. Make that roll. Give yourself, I'm going to say, a plus two to that roll. Okay, I got a 19. 19 total. I'll, like, do one of his buttons up and straighten his tie. <laughs> um, uh, That's so good. Yeah, yeah, look, man. Look. I know what these people are like, man. They told me not to tell anyone where I was getting my stuff from. I heard what mm. they did to that kid a couple of weeks ago, you know. I, look, I, 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 I can try and introduce you to them, but I, I, I mean, I, I can't give you any promises, man. I, you don't know what these people are like. How about this? How about this? You just give us the name, the location. We'll keep your name out of it. Well, so you found him through some other guy, some other mooch. Yes, we and I'll still put you in my next home. sick beat. Seems like a win-win, doesn't it? All right. I'll tell you what I know. 28th level. You'll find some... Uh, some nice folk. <laughs> I use the term nice kind of loosely because they're kind of mean. Um, they've started uh, setting up shop in what appears to be like some kind of old medical center, something that was supposed to be a medical center. They got their hands on it. They got their hands on all of the equipment that was in there. I don't know what they did to the previous tenants, uh, but probably ain't pretty. You know what I mean? Um, How many? Hardware. Look, what man. Are packing? I don't know. They don't seem to be like... I mean, I don't, I don't know that much about gangs and that city or anything like that. They don't seem to be like any of the... Any, any, any of the town? I mean, maybe five, six, something like that. No, oh, it should be easy. Do they like four crap? Do they like crap? I mean, I'm sure. But right. they know who I am. I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't stop to ask them their taste in music last time I fucking <laughs> was buying synth coke off them. But uh, I don't know, man. Why don't you ask them yourself? Twenty-eighth level, can't miss him. Old medical facility, right up there, nestled all the way in the corner. You get a bad smell, you know you found the right place. You know what, Stevie? I think you are gonna have a good day. And I'll like pat him on the shoulder. And I'll be like, "Give me your number, so next time I'm doing a side, like a secret gig, I can text you." Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, he pulls out his personal agent, and uh, you guys do the whole awkward, like swapping number thing. And he, oh no, he, he doesn't get mine. Yeah, I get his. Yeah, he's, he he gives you his number, and he's like, "All right, just like, can you just do me a favor and just don't mention that you you, you learned about them from me? They can be like pretty touchy about that kind of thing. You know what I mean? I don't want to get thrown over the balcony like that kid. Secret safe with us. Thank you. Yeah, Have sure. the best and, day, um, and I hope you're not too late for work. If we do find that you're leading us into some bad gear, and we've got your number to track you down too. So uh, thanks very much man. there. Stevie. Do I get a Thank you, Stevie. Do I Very good and a big slap on the back. And he presses the open door and the, the door opens up and as he's sort of exiting the uh, elevator, he turns around and like, do I at least get a shout out on the next diss track? Yeah. Stimpy's <laughs> Stimp on the track. We will keep your secret. I say, holding up the camera still with the red light on. The doors close. The screen lights the up. You hit the button, and these elevators rattle as they begin to lift up through the center of this courtyard up to the 28th level of Mega Block H10. The door is open. You can see that that relentless advertising continues throughout the entire structure on the 28th level. The courtyard features an open well that looks all the way down to the foyer below and up to the construction site above. You can hear the sound of power tools and welding that's echoing from above. You can see a man and a woman leaning nonchalantly 
against a low wall. But what are they doing, Sven? What are they doing? Um, hardcore penetration. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Are they construction workers? Um, they are they're hammering. They're definitely Nails. they're definitely yeah. nice construction workers. Um, uh, around the circumference of the building, you can see these uniform um, singular doors. They're all painted with, um, you know, incrementally raising numbers in this yellow high vis paint. Um, the man and the woman that you see. Uh, I'll actually have to have a look. Um, you see a a man. Uh, he has a lean frame. He has unkempt auburn hair, threadbare clothing, and a jacket covered in a mishmash of patches. Um, and you can see a woman who appears to be clad in cheap leather with raven black hair pulled tight on her scalp. Um, That's hot. The woman is leaning over the railing, sort of with her elbows resting on the concrete um, uh, sort of railing, um, and she's sort of taking a draw from a cigarette. Um, behind them, you can see in the corner of the um, structure, there's a door, and over the top of it is this faded green sign with a green cross. Ooh, hey. does anyone know what that is? I'm not very perceptive. Yeah. Is, um, does anyone know what that cross. means? Yes, it means green cross plus. Is that good? It's mathematics. Can I, can um, I roll a streetwise or whatever it is? See if I know what that is. Yeah, streetwise so, uh, would be absolutely perfect. Okay. Um, I'm going I got to a ten. Have to refresh my. I'm going to roll two. I got a thirty. <laughs> what? what? Your... Is that like a? Is I, I got like a crit. Crit of yeah. success. Yeah. Uh, so you roll the ten. Um, so, because at first I was like, I'm so in my own world, and then I thought about it for a second, which doesn't happen to me in real life, and then remembered it. Oh, that is a hefty drop. Yes. 28 floors straight down. Um, you step out of the elevator, which you can see on the south wall there. To your left, um, you can see the uh, medical center, what appears to be uh, an old abandoned medical center. Uh, and you can see the man and the woman sort of leaning on the railing over there. With your streetwise check, um, Gem, a 30, I can give you a fair bit of yeah. information. You can tell that that is an abandoned medical center, but you can tell more than that, the two people. Um, you can see poking out just from like the top of the shirt you can see the image of what appears to be a piranha um and the other the other person has like this myriad of patches all across their jacket you can quite clearly see a patch which is the exact same image identifying these two people as uh piranha gang so members I start, I start i look at everyone i'm like try to make piranha <laughs> <laughs> because I don't have an earpiece, so I, I didn't buy one. But I'm just like, and then someone, because they're really smart, goes, they piranhas? <laughs> Unless, or do they have to do a roll to spin? No, I was yeah. saying, what, the mud crabs? It's... I think she wants us to go talk to them. Yes, yes, piranhas, yes. Let me do the talking. I'll do the Push them off the edge. I'll persuade them that we're not trouble and we want to buy drugs and then we will kill them. I'll back yeah. you up. We'll keep We'll keep up the pretense, all right, with the, with the group. Keep yes. the cameras rolling. Yes. Very nice, yes. Excellent. This is not my area of rolling. expertise. And I am going to, um, as we do approach, get the camera rolling. I will, um, uh, just so you know, I will turn the, the light that's attached to the camera on and point it at them when we start talking to them. Mm. Who's leading the charge? I. I'll go do the talking. No. Red line. <laughs> Red line, you start Great. making your qu your way, your quay, 
this is an port uh your way across the courtyards um and as you approach especially with you um sort of flicking on the light on that camera you see the woman sort of nudge the man next to her and point her head towards you she takes a long draw from her cigarette and the man sort of pushes away from the railing tilts his head as he takes a step up towards you and he's like you got something you want to say pretty boy Yes, you are <laughs> looking for some supplies, yes. Uh, I can smell it, yes? You've got the good stuff. What's with the camera? You, it's our camera, man. You guys We're fucking narcs? Narcs? No, hi! You see him draw a knife he, from his... He said no. Underneath his, uh, from underneath his coat. Like, hi. That's like, hi. a nice knife you have. That's not a knife. Well, that's not a knife. No, you're no, Australian. <laughs> I love that. Uh, no, see, no, it's you're okay. an Aussie. It's been cool. Yeah. No, don't, don't don't like we're just here. We're just um vibing. I'm running out of coke, and um I don't know whether you know who I am, but like I'm a rapper, and I just want to get hooked up. This is my crew. How you going? Nah, this ain't your place. I don't know you. Get the fuck out of here. You I sure? don't think you should be talking to her like that. I think that you should know hey, some valuable customers persuasion. when you see them. I think I, we could both all be very persuasive. All right, <laughs> I'll tell you what. Let's uh, let's roll a persuasion check here. The results. I could also try and get a fan. Hang on, are we? Oh. Could, oh no, I'll do a persuasion. One I'll second. listen to you, fan. Wait, wait. Before we go ahead and roll that, I want to tell you a piece of information because it's an important oh, piece. Oh, of we don't want to hear it. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Why, why do we want to know what's happening in this world that you made in your own fucking... Yes, please. <laughs> I will say this. This persuasion role is going to determine whether or not these two individuals act hostilely towards you. I kind of want to fight. Is it bad yeah, that I want to roll bad? A success <laughs> means that you might be able to gather more information or make your way into this place without combat. Ooh. A failure may mean... If combat oh, i kind of want to lose so it's good win win yeah win win all right i'm rolling let's roll and i'm going to set oh, it as oh, a nice. dv 15. and how does that luck I'm thing sorry. work how does the luck thing work yeah you can oh, say no, before you I roll i, I want to anyway, add one i've already well, i got <laughs> i got 15 and then i gotta add my plus two so um yeah. that's 17. got 18. so as he draws his knife, he sees Violet sort of step out, and these guys, they might not be the top of the food chain when it comes to the gangs of Night City, but these people, you can tell immediately, are old hats at this job their life is they've been doing this sort of thing since probably the day that they were born scraping Shit, that's so long time <laughs> scraping their lives off the bottom leaks men of night like one year old doing this shit. barrel so that 14 year old was like a veteran no the 14 year olds um maybe maybe not you don't know anything about them but what you do know just from the look in their eyes is that these people um uh you know this is this has been their life this is this is the reality for some people living in night city this is how so they make their joy living to them. and they can tell because they've done this for so long they can they can read people they can see when people carry themselves in the way of oh i don't know law enforcement media that sort of thing but there's something about the way that you move something about the way that you handle yourself maybe it's the fact that you took synth coke only minutes before that sort of <laughs> eases their unrest a little bit and you see the man slip the knife back into his and i say oh so that wasn't enough what do you want oh I, I can i roll to try and make him a fan so they're actually like our lackeys um 
Or is this sort of a situation where... Are you going to feel where... bad when we have to clear them out? You make them a fan? No, nah, not, okay, nah, cool. not at all. No, not at all. Basically, when I'm out of combat, I can do it. And we avoid a combat. Uh... I, would, I would whisper under my breath to the cameraman, get her to move on. We can get inside now. We'll finish these lackeys off after. All right. So you sort of nudge me and go. Just yes, we need to. We need to get the rap video going in this way. Okay. Yes. All right. Let's go. Nice Hold to on. meet yes. you. Yes, it's lovely to meet the you woman too. sort of uh, speaks up. She flicks her cigarette over the edge of the thing. Turn that fucking camera off, or I'll rip it out of your hands and I'll throw it over the balcony. I, See, I'm sorry. Fans. I can't. Uh, can I just be um. Like shining the torch in her eyes as I say, What do you want me to turn the camera off? And I want to pull the pistol out of my camera and shoot her in the head. Oh. There we go. We're on. Yes, it's on. I can't fight for shit, but this is it's on. I'm going to get you to make one attack roll with your pistol. So are they surprised? Is it similar rules? There's no surprise rules on this. I'm allowing him to take oh, one because shot. Because I suppose everyone's used to bleakness. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to allow you to take one shot, um, Mod. Uh, let's roll yep. uh, your attack here. Uh, where are you exactly in this? Uh, well, because as, it matters. Oh, hang on. Hang on. We didn't move because we didn't know we could. I didn't know. I would have been right next to them. So because, the door is like, there. We walk up to them. I start walking Mod backwards right as they turn me. the camera off. So I'm going to say, I. I started walking away and then I walked backwards, shining the torch in their eyes to blind them. <laughs> and that's when I pulled the... All right. Um, let's have a look here. I'm going to get you to roll a d10, add your reflex plus your handgun skill. Um, and the DV for that is going to be you are three meters away. Yeah, there you are. Um, which puts you in the... Uh, DV 13 to hit. Uh, I already rolled it. I pressed the button for my heavy handgun and as um, reflex 5, handgun 6, so that's a 19. A 19 <laughs> is a hit. Roll me, um, I think it's 2d6 damage for uh, four, a heavy. 4d6 damage. Roll 4d6 points of damage. Uh, 16. 16 points of damage uh, just give me one second while i try and find some information here uh on this character um which i can't seem to do so i'm going to go that oh there we go so 16 points of damage you say and i have a question the pistol the head. it says only one hand required but it says the rate of fire is two so does that mean you get two shots off it does normally mean that you can get two shots off, but I'm allowing you okay, to take cool. a shot for free here. So we're yeah, just going to go sure. with that. Um, I'm having trouble finding this uh, particular character's hit points, though. Where is... Oh, there we go. How many hit points of damage? 16. Oh, 16. 16. Um, okay, so their armor is ablated by one... Um, and they take uh, 16 points of damage. As that heavy handgun fires, you see the light sort of reflected off this person's sunglasses uh, from that muzzle flash, and the sound is deafening, and it echoes across the courtyard, and you would imagine that anyone in any one of these apartments has probably heard the crack of this heavy gunfire as it echoes throughout the entire <laughs> courtyard. You can see some mutated pigeons suddenly fly up from their perches, hidden on like wires and stuff which are hanging across the courtyard, and we'll see you all in a fortnight. No, I want to shoot someone. <laughs> with combat, with the very first combat of Neo Magnetic. Thank you, everyone, for watching episode one of our uh, homebrew Cyberpunk Red actual play live stream, Neo Magnetic, uh, featuring uh, myself as the GM and an all star cast. Uh, Valiant, Gem, Mod, Froth. Thanks for playing this game with me. Did you all have fun? Yeah, yeah it was great. Cool.
Thanks for hosting, Sven. That was awesome. Yeah, Talk no worries at all. I felt like that that couldn't have gone like <laughs> any better than what it did. Guys, Take I rolled that. to see how it looked on tape, and I rolled two tens. That's a thirty, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Just got the greatest slow motion Max Payne headshot of all time. Oh, going for it. We are going to make the best like rap document. Oh. Rapumentary. Rapumentary. Yeah, that's it. That's a, that's a new um, a new in my notes. thing to have uh, on your on your Netflix rapumentaries. I I feel like that's a a, a segment it. all in its own. Um, <laughs> I am enjoying running Cyberpunk Reds, but I'm very excited to run some combat it's meant to be deadly it's meant to be oh, it's brutal quick and I'll prob- i could die next time you-, you expect to die don't you yeah you, you definitely there's definitely a chance that at don't any get attacked. point um you did 13 points of damage to this person in one shot so Ooh. yeah like it's it's deadly you have 30 hit points and i'll tell you right now i think you did almost half their hit points in in that first shot um and in this game when you go to half your hit points you actually um are injured and you get negatives to your rolls so it's going to be interesting when we come back uh in a fortnight from now can i just just say my cocaine will still be in effect yes it will be yes yes uh it lasts for four hours only a few minutes have passed um All right. Um, again, uh, if you have a moment, you should, um, you know, um, donate to our fundraiser for the Starlight Children's Foundation. Use the exclamation mark donate chat commands. Um, and after you've done that, you need to check out the Valiant Odyssey podcast for all your D&D podcasting needs. Valiant, you want to talk about that before we go? Yeah, we're up to our third season. We've just dropped another episode out. Um, 17? I think it's somewhere 18 now. So we're up to episode 18 of season three. We also release fortnightly. Uh, so you can look us up on Instagram at D&D Valiant Odyssey. If you want to go and follow us, we update you all there. Link. Um, it's pretty heavy role play narrative, bit of combat as well. Good fun. Yeah. Yeah. And I had the fun of being able to join you on your on your Twitch stream. So, yep. Um, I can vouch for how much fun it is because it's because it's awesome. And with that, I think we shall say good night, city, to all of you out Just there. Just putting the link in the chat before you close. Yes. Um, hang around. We might raid a channel. Um, join us on the Discord. Follow us on the Instagrams and tick tickety talks and I don't know whatever. Yeah, it's cool All these the digital days. spaces. Yeah, those things. Um, All the digital spaces you get on your agents. Follow me around, whatever you, whatever you want to do. Um, and we'll uh, we'll see you all again in a, in a fortnight from now. Um, you know, stay edgy. Good night, everybody. 